He's getting dismounted, but that is not gonna save you, my friend. That is not gonna save you, Witch King. Run for your life. It's a bad fight to take. Oh, the skull. Oof, 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 oof. Look how many units he killed. <laughs> oh, he's eating. He's hungry. He can't eat anything. Look at this face. <laughs> Do you see that? We have the yellow Dwarven player RV against the pink Man of the West player Fairy on the right side. This is how the map here in the is looking like. I like this a lot here. This looks pretty, pretty amazing to me, this design around the corner. If also some, you know, some tents here with the rangers. Just for the design of the map. Looks pretty modern to me. Farm into the forward barracks coming up for Fairy, by the way. Okay. So let's see. You're gonna see, we actually see this more and more often because what is changed now for the Man of the West faction is that the barracks is able to get your soldiers on the field 5 seconds faster. Uh, when you win the point in the roulette gamble, what can you use the points for? Actually, I think there are no rewards right now for the point system from Stream Elements. If you have any ideas what the points could be used for, then yeah, we can we can implement something into that okay so we're gonna have a uh, soldier start you see how fast they are coming now in compared to what they look like in 8.4 we have hall of warriors coming up into the pikeman actually from rb but he will have to deal with the soldiers now very very fast it looks like you want to creep this troll layer but i'm assuming he will be forced to defend himself first of all you're gonna see each other now with the builders that's the man of the west builder that's the dwarven builder from rb soldier spam is gonna be real Guardians next, but I believe they won't be out in the time, you know, by the time. And if the Man of the West player Fairy is leading forward to this mineshaft, he will be able to take it down, no big deal. Okay, the Builder is gonna be getting in safety, but he's able to see that, you know. He's able to see the uh, Pikeman from Irby, he's able to see what he's planning to do. And that's why the Man of the West player now is leading with the soldiers to this mineshaft around this side to deny him from creeping, which is very smart, but... I believe it would be a better choice for him to actually destroy this mineshaft first. You know? Because this mineshaft had zero protection and the pikemen, they are not able to match the soldiers in a one-on-one -on -one situation. There is a mineshaft at the bottom right side, but the man of the west player is, you know, scouting all the time. That's gonna be the first push with guardians and pikemen. Let's see how much damage Irby is gonna be able to deal. There is only one farm though. That's something you can always do against dwarves. Like, expanding offensively, that's gonna be something they won't expect you to do, you know? Ex you know, they, they're gonna expect you to have actually multiple farms and you trying to defend yourself. But look what Fairy is doing, he's expanding really offensively. I like that so much. He's going for a counter attack with two soldiers, let's see how much damage he will be able to deal in return. The mineshaft here is untouched, the mineshaft here is untouched, he's building up a wall hub to body block the enemy units. But he has Warchant, I mean Rallying Call, and those Guardians are not non-buffed, not buffed just yet. They are very strong in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they would also be able to deal with the soldiers, but that's not a 1v1 situation, that's a 2v1 situation buffed against non-buffed units. You have some guardians here, the soldiers, they can always catch them because guardians are way, way slower than soldiers. It's a bad fight to take for a fairy, that's why he's disengaging now. And, and yeah, he was only able to destroy one of the farms because he had only one farm around the fortress, you know? Okay. Nice one here from Fairy, he will deny him the creep. And running away is not an option for the Dwarven units. That's their biggest weakness, their immobility. They are very, very slow. They cannot move that fast. This mineshaft is gonna be taken down next, I believe, right? It's gonna be close, but he might be able to take it down. The fortress is doing a nice job defending. Gonna be really close. But he will do it, right? Yeah, the, oh, that's a horrible start actually from Irby, guys. Irby is down to 300 command points only, he has barely any units around, he has not enough money to build more mineshafts, he will be either command points kept, or he will have no money. And Fairy is able to push him back, he has a lot of soldiers on the field, he keeps spamming soldiers all the time from the barracks in the middle of the map. And even though they cannot fight against the guardians in a one-on-one, -on -one, but they can always disengage, and look at this movement speed difference between these two units. Like, if you keep running away, you will be always in a good spot. Oh, the Builder is gonna get in safety just barely. 
Uh, there is some mineshafts from Erby. He is expanding offensively. He lost the mineshafts here. That's why he was forced to rebuild that. Fairy, look the for fortress from Fairy. He has zero buildings around the fortress. Can you imagine that? That's unbelievable. But I like this a lot because this way you need to make, you know, dwarves, they need to search now for your farms all the time. And that's what, look what's gonna happen now. He's moving forward with two guardians, but there, are, there is nothing he can kill. And committing against the fortress is not gonna be a solid choice. Without the sea chambers, you won't be able to take it down. Alright, Fairy has a farm here around the bottom left side, two of them actually. He has one farm here next to the stable, he's expanding very offensively. Very offensively. The mineshot is gonna be taken down next. He's saying just kill the fortress, but look, he's paying attention around that one, you know? He has, he has two soldiers here for defense. So it's gonna be hard for him. And he can always build wallabs. Wallabs are not very expensive, but they're gonna deny so much. Hey, Gelabelar, thank you so much for the Prime for two months. Thanks for the huge spot. Appreciate that so much. Thank you. Gelabler just resubscribed for two months. Ahoy. Ahoy. Thanks. It's so funny when she's saying ahoy. <laughs> so, <laughs> ahoy. Okay. Uh, I believe this mineshaft is gonna... But the builder is going down! That's the worst thing that can happen to you. If your builder is actually stuck in between a battalion in, a, in the middle, you know? They're gonna all attack the builder at the same time and there is no way you can escape this. Gondonites are taking care of the Scardians now. And he was able to force the, <clears throat> the warring player to retreat from the fortress. Uh, make sure of X lost against DJ Mustafa. That might be a wrong commitment, though. I don't like this commitment that much. Can he take it down? That's the question. I mean, there is no rebuild available for Erby just yet. Oh, the Gondonites. Oh, that's gonna change everything. Heal is being used too. There is a statue coming up for Fairy. Look at the playstyle from Erby. Uh, from Fairy. He's so aggressive against dwarves. I like that. I like that. I mean, we have not seen something like this before. Very aggressive playstyle with the Man of the West. Has zero buildings around your around his fortress still. This is crazy. This is insane. This is fairy. I like that. Might also be able to destroy this mineshaft next. One more trample is incoming from the Gondonites against the Guardians. They are going down as well as the mineshaft. And Irby, ladies and gentlemen, is down to 200 command points. That means he has zero mineshafts up on the field. Zero. You start the game with 200 command points. It feels like Irby is just starting the game. Because he has zero money income beside this from this one fortress. Mineshaft has to be given up. I think he has also only one builder because he lost the other one before. He's clamping now against the stable. The units are far, far away and there is no mineshaft they can enter. To get away from this one. He needs to walk now all the way back to his fortress. And as you guys know, the dwarven units, they are not made for walking. They are made for entering the mineshaft and exiting the mineshaft. That's what they are made for. He's keeping the builder busy. He has zero units for defense. All the units he has are around this side. The, the fortress now is being under attack. But the thing is, I believe he has enough power points. No, he doesn't have enough power points. He went actually for the heal. That means he was not even he won't even have the uh the say it the rebuild ability available. I also hear Man of Deal, uh, but that's actually King Brand. So that's why he was forced to you know make King Brand so he have he has at least some defense. Nice, nice micro here from the Gondor Knights. I like that. Are you worried about um stream snipers in Lord of the Rings? Uh yeah, in like Big finals or something like this, we are putting some delay on the stream, but the thing is, uh, when you put delay on the stream on Twitch, uh, sometimes we don't get the encoding options. And the, the way it works is like you put stream delay on the Twitch, on OBS, and you start your stream. After five minutes or three minutes, of course, depending on the delay, the stream is starting. Then you see, oh, I don't have the encoding options. And you need to close the stream and again start it and wait for the three minutes. Was happening a lot to me in the World Championship 2020. That's why going for a stream delay and not knowing if you will have if you will get the encoding options or not is just a waste. 
of time. That's why we are not doing it. There is like an automatic um, delay in the stream about 10 seconds. But of course, 10 seconds is not very, very good. We know that. What? When is your next hot tub stream again? What? What's that? <laughs> what are you saying, Draco? I think that's gonna be GG now. Nice one, Hall of Warriors is gonna be taken down before he will be able to recruit any, any units. King Brian is trying his hardest to defend himself all the time, but he's the last man standing. Like, that's the only unit he has on the field. Herbie is fighting until the end. And actually managing to keep himself alive. He has heal ability available, rallying call, but you have nothing to buff, that's the problem. He has also enough power points now for the for the rebuild, if he wants to, if he needs to. It's usually around S, okay. Do you play with the viewers would love to play with you sometimes? Of course we can do that. I mean, this was not like a like a thing, but we're gonna of course make like 4v4 streams in which you guys will be able to join. You are more than welcome to do that. But right now we have like events, tournaments. You are also able to participate in every single event. This is not like exclusive events for some certain players. Everyone is welcome to participate, you know? And the best way to be up to date about the events is gonna be joining the Discord community because there you will get the announcements and you have you have the chance like everyone else to join the events we are hosting for the games. We have the yellow motor player Erby against the pink motor player Fairy in this one. Builds me an army worthy of motto DJ uh, Jeft. DJ Jet, thanks for the follow, appreciate that so much. Welcome to the stream. I think Mordo player will win this one. I bet on Mordo, true. I will be used now. This is from, this is from Fairy, by the way, guys. And Erby is not going, going to use the eye. He might go for the War Chant. War Chant is better in a one on one situation because War Chant is giving you 50 50 damage armor and eye gives you only 33 33 and 50% combat experience. Uh, Luis Montcalm, thanks for the follow as well, appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. And yeah guys, just about this channel, about, about us. We are organizing events, tournaments for BFME games. And uh, there is one big event always every single year. And that's called World Championship. Which includes uh, 48, 64 players, even more than that. Everyone is welcome to participate. And this year's World Championship will have a cash prize around $1,000. In September, it means you have still around five months time to train for the upcoming event, and you are also able to sign up. And also, I steal 88. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Two so Orkpits are coming up for the model play at the bottom side. On the other side, we see Orkpit, Orkpit, Haradrim Palace coming up for Erby, the yellow model play at the top side. Sorowal is a map which is kind of like a like a pirate theme because you are able to get the ship rights under your control. Majunju, Eva Allah Hoshkelden. Thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Uh, Deal Tower, you can destroy it as well quite easily. We have a fight here between orcs against orcs. I'm pretty sure orcs are gonna win this fight. And you know what's important to keep in mind? In a situation like this, it's always better if you are using the old ground stance. And Navia, Navia, Navia Ta, thank you for the follow as well. Appreciate it. Means a lot. Thanks for the spot, guys. Thanks for joining this stream and watching this stream. Means a lot to me. So eyes on cooldown from Fairy, it's available from Erby. And the reason, the main reason why people are choosing the Eye of Sauron with the Moro faction over the War Chant or the Tainted Land is simple because Eye of Sauron from the Spellback of Mordor is leading you directly to the industry. So you can skip War Chant and Tainted Land and collect 10 power points after the Eye and you will get the chance to unlock the industry from your Spellbook, you know? Which is gonna be a huge power spike, even though industry got nerfed in the patch we are using right now by 25%. I mean, it's still very, 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 very good, and you still don't wanna miss it. 
And we see three orc pits from um, Fairy and two orc pits from Irby, but he has a Haradrim Palace level 2 for the Haradrim Lancers. Even though I would like to see more and more orc pits, because the thing is, you know, more the orcs got buffed in the version 8.4. That means they only cost 30 command points now. That again means that you can also spam a lot of orcs even when your command points are low. And since they cost only 80 resources, money is not gonna be a problem. So if you lose them against the enemy units, it's absolutely fine as well. Not gonna hurt you that much. But if you lose the lenses on the other side, they cost 450 each, that's gonna hurt you. Okay. So I, uh, he has orc arches, but he needs to avoid fighting these orcs in a melee fight, because orc arches are way more expensive. They cost 250 each, while orcs they cost only 80. You know what I would like to see in this matchup? I would love to see the black orcs, guys. Because the orc pit level 2 is not gonna give you only, give you the chance to uh, recruit black orcs, but also you get the orcs on the field 10% faster. Which doesn't sound too crazy, but if you add on that you actually... The of men is over. The time of the orc has come. The time of the orc has come. Gothmog is right as always. We see a lot of orcs on the field. Gothmog would make a lot of sense, by the way. Because Gothmog is giving you leadership permanently. And also the day of the orc, uh, I mean the, the fear resist and the iron hand can be also nice in this matchup because Mordor is a faction which has a lot of tools to create fear on your units. Like Drama Troll, Fear Beast, Witch King, even the Gatewatcher expansion around the fortress, you know? And all, all of that stuff can be denied once you have Gothmog level 5. A lot of orcs. How many orcs do you like? Yes. <laughs> okay. Actually, Irby is being able to push his opponent back, even though... Majinju, thank you for the, for the sub! Appreciate it! Majinju, that means a lot to me, man. Thank you so much. You just followed the channel and subbing right after. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, we have only two Orc Pits for Irby, but he has the Lens advantage, you know? He is trampling down all the time with the lenses, doing putting a lot of pressure, and that's gonna force Fairy to make some Easter Links now. Which again are slow units. That's a War Chant play from Irby. I is available from Fairy, but he's down power point wise. He has only 3 power points, and Irby has way more than that. He will have now double buff with the I and War Chant combined. He can make his units really strong. I will be used now as well from the Mortar player Irby. The units are... Do you see two eyes of Saurons at the same time? <laughs> I see you. No, I see you. No, I see you. <laughs> but bad trample into the Easter Links though. And I wiped, uh, he took a lot of damage from these uh, Easter Links with the Lancers. He will be forced to retreat now. One of the Orc Pits is down. Radrim Palace is going to be the next target from Irby with the Easter Links. Can he take it down? But Fairy has a lot of Orcs for defense. He has some Orcs also around this side. And 500 command points available for Irby. And Fairy has 450. The scheme isn't over yet. If Fairy can skip the war chant and go for the industry immediately, he might even become ahead in this one. Because industry is such a great tool to boost your money for multiple minutes. It's actually work, it's actually active on your slaughterhouse for like 2-3 minutes. And all you need to do is use it and then protect your slaughterhouse for a long time. The Troll Kitch is coming up now for the Mortar player Irby. Trolls are gonna be very effective in this one. Even though they got nerfed. They got nerfed many many times guys. And they got nerfed in the 8.4, they got also nerfed in the beta, they lose movement speed, they're gonna move way slower now. And looks like Fairy is gonna save for the industry. He's 3 power points away from that, he's building a army worthy of Moto and sending a lot of orcs forward. What happens if you spawn a Balrog, where other player is spawning a Balrog, then you have two Balrogs on the field. <laughs> I mean, if you, you think if, you, if they're gonna damage each other, uh, they're gonna of course damage each other, but I believe it's not gonna be one-shotting them, you know? Oh, Warchant? He's gonna go for a Warchant, he's changing his mind. It's a buff advantage now, Irby has no buff and no leadership available for this fight. Let's see how much... The Lancers are going for a bad trample, and that's what I'm trying to say. You could lose 450 resources, you know? 
but if I believe if you use Ignite and Breath Fire, Balrog against Balrog, the one Balrog is gonna go down. I'm not sure, but in BFMU1, if you use Ignite, Breath Fire, and then one auto attack, you can kill the enemy Balrog. I tried that in BFMU1. I don't know about the interaction between the two Balrogs in Rise of the Witch King, though. Need to try it out one time, I guess. <clears throat> Alright, troll on the field just in time. Getting all the Easter links, he needs to avoid fighting them. Fairy is going for a massive counter attack against Erby. And Erby is down to 525, but Fairy is down to 450 command points. Erby is gonna have. I mean, look at this, guys. They have almost the same amount of command points and the same amount of power points collected. Uh, let's take a look here. We have three Orc Pits still. All of them are level 1. And also the Haradrim Palace is only level 1. So Erby has the chance to recruit some Corsairs or Lancers, unlike Fairy. Oh, but he's going down the Slaughterhouse level 2. That's hurt. That hurts. Erby is now down to 400 command points only. And losing those highly level Slaughterhouses is always painful. Always painful. And power point wise, it's gonna be Fairy first with the Industry. He's only one power point away from that. And, uh, you know, Erby needs over two and a half power points. Hmm. I don't know, man. It was looking so nice for Erby, right? It was looking so nice for Erby, but yet it was just not enough. Need Kofmog? Kofmog would make a lot of sense here. I agree with you. Kofmog would make a lot of sense here. You have a lot of orcs. You have permanent leadership. Just why not? He doesn't cost that much. He's gonna be still offering you leadership from Eye of Sauron 24-7 pretty much. Um, but maybe getting something like a... Uh, Black Orcs, I would like to see Black Orcs here because they are way, way stronger. And, you know, you need to deal... What, what Fairy has on the field right now? Fairy has only Orcs and Easterlings, right? That's it. So, and Black Orcs are gonna be good against everything what, what Fairy has on the field right now. Okay, the Troll is alive, but he's very damaged, very badly damaged. The thing is, if you choose to use a tree with a Troll, you cannot undo it. So, you cannot say, okay, I wanna... I wanna Disarm the tree and eat an orc to regenerate, it's not possible anymore. That's possible if you are using the rocks though. The trolls in BFME 1 are so much, so far, you know, there is such a big difference between these trolls. In BFME 1, when you wanna throw a rock, you need to grab a rock from the stone, for example. He's gonna search the rock to grab it. In Rise of the Witch King, it, it feels like he's wearing rocks with his, with, you know, in his pants or something. Maybe in his belly he has rocks. Because he has unlimited rocks. It's like Legolas in the movies, you know, when he was never running out of arrows. He was running out of arrows finally in the Hobbit movies. But in the, the first trilogy, Legolas, it feels like he had always arrows, you know. <laughs> he was never running out of arrows. Okay. So, let's take a look into the command points. Industry was used from... Uh, fairy, but did he lose the slaughterhouse with the industry on it? No, he didn't. That's a smart move from Fairy. I like this. Do you see that, guys? He's hiding the slaughterhouse at the bottom right side. That's why he's using industry on this one. He's getting so much money. Plus 53 from this one, by the way. And Irby is also using slaughterhouse with the industry. But Irby is using it somewhere else. Where is Irby using it on? Oh, he's using it in the front side. That's gonna be, of course, easier to be find for Fairy. Well, I believe this is going to be hard for Erby to find. Uh, trolls on the field, I believe. Look the money from Erby. You see that? He has over 2,000. But Fairy has to get something on the field very strong, right? I believe there's, there is going to be a Felbis very soon from Fairy. Because he was never doing anything else but Oryx. So he has to get a lot of money now. I wouldn't be surprised if Fairy gets a Felbis on the field very soon. Because look the money from Erby. He has over 2,000. And Felbis costs you 3,000. So Felbis is going to be definitely very impactful in this one. And Erby is also not fighting for the map control. It looks like they are both actually sending all the units. I mean, with both Erby is sending all the units through the same pathway, you know? This is the pathway Erby is using. Fairy is also using the top side. That's why he's coming ahead in those kind of situations. Erby has only one slaughterhouse around the top right side, but he is not scouting very nicely. That means this slaughterhouse from Fairy is going to be in great protection... Because it's unseen from Erby. More and more trolls. He's gonna creep this goblin layer. That's, that's gonna be nice because this troll is gonna hit level 2 this way. Very important. Get him level 2. This way he's gonna recover over time. 
He has to kill this Oryx very soon. Still three Orc Pits. I believe Fairy has to get something really strong on the field. Look his money, you know, he has again over 2,000. He can even try to save for the Witch King potentially. You know what, I would love to see in this one. I would love to see Gollum. But the thing is, on the map Sora while the ring heroes are disabled. That's why we are not able to see Gollum in this one. The Slaughterhouse has been taken down by the way. That's a level 2 Orc with the Bloodthirsty passive. He was not killing this for some reason. I don't know why not. Could have gotten level 2 and get some money as well. But I feel like he was not paying attention. Irby has to pay attention around this side as well. It looks like he's gonna give up the Slaughterhouse for no reason. Let's take a look PowerPoint wise. 6 power points for Irby after Industry Eye and Warchant. And 9 power points for Fairy. One of the trolls has been taken down. The other one is getting damaged. But this is level 2. So he should be fine. Maybe he's gonna run it down. Look where the waypoint is. You cannot send him to the river, Irby. That's not possible. He's like, troll, you are stinking. Go take a shower. Perry has definitely a Falbis coming. Of that, 100%. And Irby on the other side has only 350 command points. Irby is losing map control. He lost a lot of slaughterhouses because he was not paying attention. This matchup requires a lot of macro. He has also a Felbis now, Morgomia. And I believe that this is gonna be also the case for Fairy. Even though Fairy is in a situation in which he can abort the Felbis and go for the Witch King instead. Witch King doesn't only have more HP than a Nazgul, but also you have the Furious, uh, you have the uh, debuff from Witch King, which is the strongest debuff in the game. However, in the beta, if you don't know guys, uh, the Fell Beast or the Witch King is not able to debuff your units anymore if he is on the Fell Beast. So in order to activate your debuff with the Witch King, you need to get him dismounted from the Fell Beast and be on foot. Otherwise, he's not gonna get the debuff ability available anymore. The Fell Beast is of course very very nice in a situation like this. You're gonna kill a lot of Oryx. There is, not, there is no counterplay. The archers, they will need ages to destroy this fell beast. The more the orcs they are, more, ar more the orc archers are not dealing too much damage. And there we go, that's a Camille. Camille and Morgomir. Morgomir is going to be chased down now by this Camille, by the way. The thing is, Fairy has 775 command points and Irby has only 500. Now that's the problem. And also Fairy has 14 power points collected. He's one power point away from the Worm Summon. Which can literally deal a lot of damage. Imagine Worm here. You can kill all these three buildings at the same time. Okay. And yeah, Fairy was just, you know, kind of... Oh, he's getting dismounted. <laughs> okay, you got... <laughs> Look, Nazgul. Borgomir. Yeah, now he's not even able to attack him back, you know. Gets mounted again on your fell beast. <laughs> he looks like the guy who's walking down and up all the time. Where is the guy? Let me show you guys. Look this. He's looking like this dude. Oh, but he's being chased down. The builder is going to be the next target from Fairy. Almost one-shotting the builder with the Fell Beast. This guy is still alive. He has also the debuff when he is um, dismounted. But this debuff is not nullifying... Ah, uh, that's the Worm Summon I was talking about, by the way. There comes the Worm, like mentioned before. One-shotting everything. The Fell Beast is going down. Irby is going to call it GG. And what a great performance from Fairy once again. You have seen the same matchup. On the map Firian Zeal, which a was like a... Never linked. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. He arrives precisely when he means to. True. Uh, Honeysack, thanks for the for the for tuning in. And welcome to the stream. But you are indeed too late today. So you miss a lot. <laughs> but it's it is how it is. You have two mineshafts coming up for dwarves. And uh, barracks, this time defensive barracks from Fairy actually, guys. So he's not building a barracks in the middle, unlike in the game number one. And yeah, I don't like this positioning that much. Ideally, you want to place it a little bit more next to the farm. This way you have a protection. But I believe that's fine as well. The thing is, the, the farm is in the range of the fortress, you know? The fortress is going to be able to protect this farm. Uh, PowerPoint-wise, it's going to be rallying call for men and also rallying call for dwarves. They have no other secondary option, really, early on. Okay. 
it works by pressing control. Yeah, you press control, you hold control, then you can, you can, uh, you know, draw all the time. Guardians, this time from Erby, not Pikeman, unlike in the first game, which is gonna be a more offensive playstyle against the Man of the West player. But Fairy is changing his mind, and players like Fairy are kind of unpredictable because they are not doing the same thing over and over and over again. He's actually adapting his gameplay in every single game which makes it very hard for Irvi to see what's coming. He's gonna start with Pikeman this time, creep this ward layer with the Pikeman, get level 2 with them, get money and experience points and also, you know, power points from the spell book. Gonna spam some soldiers next. Uh, he's also scouting this area, do you see that with the second build down? Because he's afraid, or he's not afraid, but he wanna know if Irvi is creeping this troll layer with his Pikeman. And he knows that this is not the case now. Uh, scouting against dwarves is very important in this game. Alright, um, there are no guardians, oh, there are guardians inside. But the thing is, they are very immobile, you know? What can you do now? He can always hit and run. Hit, and when he's engaging, run around and be annoying all the time. He's just gonna commit now. He's gonna try to destroy this one. Uh, but that's gonna feed a lot of power points. Now it's too late to demolish. At this point, of the, when it's around 40% HP, if you even demolish, you're gonna still get experience and power points. So if you wanna demolish, you wanna always demolish before like 50% HP mark. This way you make sure that the opponent is not getting any experience points and also any uh, power points. Okay. Three mineshafts, more, more guardians are coming. The thing is, he has only one mineshaft around this side, but the Man of the West player is spamming a lot of soldiers on the fields now. And the buff to the barracks with the 5 seconds earlier the soldiers is actually quite significant in a matchup like this. Okay, he's moving from all the pathways. It's a perfect farm placement, I like this, because what this farm does now for the Man of the West player, look at this. He's seeing this entire pathway, do you see that? And he will see the builder passing through. And he will know that there is no mineshaft around this side. He's, he doesn't need to be worried about this side anymore. Nice. Uh, yeah. Abusing the movement advantage buff. He was also able to destroy this mineshaft here. Next to the Hall of Warriors. The most important mineshaft for dwarves. And just, you know, look at the situation. That's horrible for dwarves. Because they are really not made to chase enemy units, you know. Welcome to this stream. Isengard is going to war. But my lord, there is no such force. And then you see Saruman, you know, going like a like a dark lord. And like, are you sure? Uh, he's like, he's like, you know, are you sure about that? He's like this guy. Are you sure about that? Yeah, Saruman was like, no, no, no. It's not the truth. We have, you need thousands, ten thousands. Mindshot has been taken down. Um, battle wagon start against soldier spam. No, I feel like you know what you can do is maybe extra overstart. Just why not? Extra overstart can be also not bad against soldiers. Because this matchup feels like really hard now with the soldier spam from Man of the West. He's spamming soldiers all the time and look at this build speed from these units, you know? Going now for the second barracks to make it even harder for Irby. Irby is falling apart. He is down to what? He's actually leading power command point wise because Man of the West play is not expanding very nicely. But the thing is, he has the momentum. It's very, very hard, yeah. The builder might be also in trouble. No, he's gonna be able to get in safety. Hit and run, use the mobility advantage. Dwarves are just very, very slow. And I don't like to see that that much. I mean, dwarves are. No, I don't wanna say dwarves are bad, but I feel like they are very painful to play with. And they will walk like this, you know, it's like. A grandma you need to wait to pass through the street and you are driving with the car it's gonna take her ages so sometimes it's just better to not to, to just drive you know what i'm saying just make sure that you are passing before she's gonna start walking and that's the same situation they are so extremely slow they are very good once they get the chance to clamp against your buildings with three four units and use rallying coal then they are really strong but macro and mineshaft placement and protection is the only way to victory with this faction. And once you fall behind, and that's what I feel like, there is no chance of victory anymore. 
Like I've not, I've barely seen dwarves falling behind against any faction and then coming back. That means macro, tunnel, uh, mine shafts, connection, and pr putting pressure. You need to be the one who is putting pressure. If this is the other way around, it's kind of painful. Pro tip: just win the game. True. We have had one barracks yet, but what about a second barracks? <laughs> what about a second breakfast? Alright, this Forge Warriors, oh, that's unfortunate, his command points capped, he's gonna lose the Forge Warriors, that's painful, painful. Luckily, Irby is in the team, which is also balancing the game, so after losing now against Man of the West as Dwarves two times, he might be kind of motivating the others to either tune down Man of the West a little bit, or make the Dwarven units a little bit more mobile. They are strong enough, they are just very, very slow in compared to any other unit in the game. Rallying Cole. He's using charge attack to get a bit fast, a bit movement speed. Next patch, dwarves are gonna be fast as horse. As imagine dwarven units are running as fast as Glorfindel runs on his or rides on his uh, horse when he is using Windrider. You are just zooming them. Zoom, 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 you know? Would be so funny. <laughs> Mustafa is saying man versus dwarves is balanced now. Mustafa wants to wants to get man of the west really strong. But I don't like this. I mean this is my personal opinion, you know? But I don't like to see a double again a spammy faction. Look, this is like watching Mordor orcs or goblin warriors, you know, they are spamming souls all the time. No transition needed into anything else like stable or archer range anymore. It's like a pretty straightforward play like goblins. Make goblin cave spam. Make Barak spam, make Orc Pit spam. The question is, do we really need a third faction to spam with? And even Hall of the Kingsmen from Engma is spamming sometimes Kundabad Warriors. And this feels like the same situation also now with the Men of the West. Which I don't, I'm not very happy about this. But, you know, maybe it's the way to go. Who knows? As long as they are more playable, I'm fine. 20 seconds, yeah. 20 seconds re recruit time now from the barracks, from the men of the west. They are not strong or something, they are just recruited faster. That's it. Alright. I mean, dwarves are still kind of in the game, but they are down to what? 450 command points, also power point wise he's very down. Barry, the man of the West player, now has enough power points for the Lone Tower summon, which I believe is gonna be a bad choice against Dwarves, because I feel like, first of all, he has no arches to put them inside the tower, you know? And second thing is, Guardians, they are also able to destroy these towers in no time anyway. 300 units from on the field from uh, Barry and 360 from Irby. Irby has a little bit more units on the field right now. Barry is finally expanding offensively at the right side. This mineshaft is gonna be taken down next. The thing for Irby is, the only good thing for Irby is now that he is having army advantage. So he's killing stuff, but he's losing buildings. And we're gonna see if this is gonna pay out in long terms. Because Irby is not losing too many units, he's only losing buildings every single time. Money on the ground, at the bottom right side. Um, if Fairy doesn't pay attention, these units are gonna be able to destroy this farm by the way. Aggressive stance, Guardians are very very strong and it looks like Fairy is not paying attention and this farm is almost level 2. This mineshaft is gonna be taken down and another big attack is happening. The Forge Works has to be cancelled. If you cancel the building, you get money back. But if you don't cancel it, you don't get money back or you get only half the money back. Cancel it! Oh, it should be cancelling it, dude. Oh, that's bad. You need to demolish, the money, to, demolish to get the money back, you know? It's, it's gonna become too late now. One more hit and it's too late. It's too late now. No reason of demolishing it at this point of the game. He's gonna try to buy some time, that's why he's not demolishing it. But the units are leveling up and they will always be able to disengage whenever they want. And that's a massive counter attack from Irby now. Okay, this is gonna hurt now. This might hurt guys. Hobbit, Alliance Summon and uh, three Guardians with Rallying Cole. This farm has been taken down by the way. Is he gonna commit against the fortress, really? But Tom Bombadil is gonna be able from Ferret to stop this attack. Bombadillo 
For Odo, it's like Tom Bombadil, one versus one. And Tom Bombadil is like, are you sure about that? I'm dancing around, I'm a happy man. And he's just abusing the fact that dwarves are very, very slow. Normally, every unit is able to dodge Tom Bombadil by running away. But dwarves are none of them. At least deal economical damage, maybe destroy some farms, but Tom Bombadil, perfect timing, perfect choice was needed because this attack would be devastating. I mean, at least Erby was kind of forcing his opponent to use the Tom Bombadil summon defensively, that something could be even worse than that. And Fairy was also ready with the rebuild anyway, to repair the fortress just in time. 350 command points only for Fairy only though. And 400 command points for Erby. This game isn't over yet. Rui833, thanks for the follow, appreciate it and welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Okay, Guardians against Pikeman. So, Samwise Cam, Samwise is brave. <laughs> He's not brave enough. Okay. 350 command points, 400 command points. The game is so even in terms of command points and power points, actually. Yeah, they have almost the same command points and power points all the time. But when I take a look into the minimap, it looks so much better for Fairy. But it's still winnable for dwarves. Oh, he's gonna lose some of the Scarians to this mountain troll. I mean, to the skiff troll from the creep at the top left side. He has no mine shafts nearby, but the farm in the front side is gonna be taken down next. A lot of soldiers, no transition into anything else. No stable, no archer range, no archers, no heroes either. So he has only pikemen and soldiers, that's it. This mineshaft is going to be definitely taken down, it's very very low, so, and there are no units nearby. Another mineshaft in the front side is going down as well. On the, at the very same time, Erby is also doing some damage. He will be also able to destroy two of the farms from the, from the Man of the West player. And Fairy has now, has now zero farms around the fortress, look at this. He will lose every single one of them. Okay, this mineshaft has been taken down around this side, this, is this was going down as well, and this is going down too. So let's now, Fairy has 250 command points, yet now 300, he has two farms, that's it chat, that's it. <laughs> they have no command points dude, <laughs> they have no money re regeneration. Both of them, they keep killing stuff from each other all the time. But Irby might be able to win this one. It's gonna be tough, if Fairy wins this, he's gonna be only one win away from winning the series of course. And Irby has to make something happen. We have seen this matchup now twice. In the first game, but also now in the game. Oh, but the Barracks is going down. Nice one. One Barracks is gone. He might... Oh, he's gonna use Rebuild, but I believe he's gonna lose this Barracks too. They can still potentially do it. If this unit clumps also against this one... Oh, that's gonna change everything. Losing both the Barracks means he has zero production buildings on the field. Means... He will eventually lose the map control. Irby is going for a big rallying call play. And both the barracks are gone just like that. Well done. Very well done. Warwin Riches is being used from Irby as well. On this mineshaft in the front side. He's getting some more money now. 400 command points for Fairy. He has not enough units on the field. And he has to wait for the barracks to come up before he can recruit any more units. 350 command points for Irby, but he has Dwarven Riches, he's gonna have more money, definitely more money than the Man of the West player. And he has Barracks on the field, so he will get more and more units on the field. That is a farm he can destroy next one. And he has also one farm around the fortress. That's it, right? And there is also one farm, okay. So he has three farms under his control so far. Every single one of these farms is level one. And Irby is turning, the, turning this game around. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. That is an offensive mineshaft coming up. It was looking so nice for Fairy early on. But Irby didn't give up. He said, you won me this matchup one time already. You're not gonna win the same matchup twice. And Rallying Call is on cooldown, but I believe they are all level 2. Yeah, they are all level 2. I mean, all, almost all of them. Charge attacks. Oh, chat. Chat, do you see that Sea Chalmers getting purchased? And he knows Rebuild is on cooldown. Sea Chalmers, Dwarves, is this gonna be it? I believe this is gonna be it. The, the surrounding hitting like a truck against the fortress. The, do you see this damage? Holy quacka moly. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. Fairy is calling it GG. The Gondonites are a little bit too late. 
maybe 10 seconds earlier they could be kind of reaching out the, the, the build is putting water and celebrating the, 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 win, the victory from dwarves but it's happening but Irvi is gonna be the winner of this one the score is gonna be 2-1 I told you this is gonna be a close one saying GG and keeps fighting he has these two production buildings which are keeping him alive but Fairy is not gonna wait until he loses them he's gonna leave the game and the victory goes to Irvi 2-1 Uh, we have seen this matchup already today between DJ and Major of X. Major of X unfortunately left this quite quite fast. We are on the map Sakura Forest this, this time. And we have at the bottom right side the yellow Elven player Irby against the pink Mordor player Fairy at the top left side. Two slaughterhouses are coming up for the Mordor player. Eye of Sauron is gonna be used from the Elven player at the bottom right. Power point wise, uh, Rallying Cole has been chosen of course from Elves. And I is gonna lead to industry or to the war chant. Take it this way. But you know what I feel like? I feel like in a matchup like this, where you can get attacked very early from the Elven player, maybe war chant could be a better choice. Build me an army, war fee of Mordor. Uh, yeah. Let's see if Fairy got what it takes. Build our army, war fee of Mordor indeed. I is actually lasting quite a lot. I didn't even I, I didn't even notice, but it's still lasting there. He will be able to see the builder. He was able to scout everything, but he doesn't actually. What is, what is this start all about? I don't know that. I don't know about that. Guys, he's starting with Lorian archers. Normally you see either Lorian Warriors or Pikemen for the creep, but Archers against Mordor? Is this really the way to go? I'm not sure. And Mordor player is building now the second Orc Pit and Haradrim Palace at the same time. I'm assuming he wanna try to get some Haradrim Lancers on the field in this one. How much is the first money? Uh, hey Skippy, welcome! Long time no see, no, long time no see Skippy. Welcome back. Um... You mean in the Champions League? Like, this is more, yeah, of course, it's not like a lot, but the first place is gonna get 30, 30 dollars. 15 for the for the second and 5 for the third. Still better than nothing. It's like a little uh, motivation for them to reach the top one spot, but I think the, the main reason why we are doing that is of course also to have some more competition and also have an understanding about the, about the changes in the speed up. Because I feel like when you are testing the game between good players, Wulkat with the gifted. Wulkat for 101 gifted subs to the channel. Can you imagine that? 101 okay, gifted one subs. subs. What a pirate. Yeah, this, is, this is crazy. Thank you so much for the huge spot, Wulki Talkie. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh, he was thinking that he's extending the duration of his own sub. <laughs> then he accidentally... Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm not I'm not I'm not sad about this mistake of yours. <laughs> Alright, archers are getting into the fortress range. The fortress should be able to deal with them, no big deal. That's a very defensive playstyle from elves against Mordor. I've not seen this many times. Irby normally I mean normally elves are the ones who are attacking. But Irby chooses to defend himself. Oh 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 oh, oh no. All ground stands, smart reaction to not get one shotted, but there is no backup. Oh, hold ground stands. Oh, he should be changing into hold ground stands, but a little bit too late. One more trample. What a great micro from Fairy. That's a lot of. And Vulcat also increasing himself for 17 months after the gifted one. Vulcat just resubscribed for 17 months. Ahoy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sean Vulcat. Means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Bamboo, Bamboo New, thanks for the follow as well. Welcome to this stream, as well as Mala Deals. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, Irby was able to creep this one, but he's not paying attention to get the money just yet. Oh, what happened to his Lancers? Did something happen? He's saying X XD, 0 HP. What happened? I'm not sure. But Fairy is expanding offensively once again. Fairy likes to do that actually. He likes to expand many many times offensively. 
Trample is incoming from the lenses. He has no Easter links around. It's going to be Fiesta. There we go. Beautiful Trample, but he needs to be careful to not get slowed down. Rallying Call is going to be used. Rallying Call is stronger than Eye of Sauron. And that means the Elven player is going to lose his lenses. Fiesta. Uh oh. Lorien Warriors are having trouble to actually get to the orcs in time. And he might he might still lose this Malon tree, by the way. And he lost the entire Lancer Battalion the second they came on the field. He's going for a counter attack, but Mordo, you know, kinda kinda having the control of the map right now. Indeed, Fairy, the Mordo player, guys, has 400 command points available. And I like the way that he's expanding with the slaughterhouses offensively. I like that a lot. Because you won't expect this, right? You won't expect this one as else. Um, I believe Irby is going to coordinate a big attack to this side of the map. So that means, I believe, I mean, I'm not sure of course, but I believe this lot of houses, this lot of houses on the right side, top right, are going to remain on the field for a really long time. Uh, Pante is saying 31, let's see. I mean, you have also said this guy's your last game when he was winning with uh, men against dwarves, but Irby was able to turn this game around. For me personally, it is not over until it is over. Until the last building and the last man goes down. I'm sure Irby is gonna keep fighting for the victory. He's gonna be able to protect this, but he's struggling to get around in time with the Lancers. Oh, 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 oh. He body blocked his own Lancers. Do you see that? He couldn't get around. That's the reason why he lost this Malon tree. That's so unfortunate for Irby. More units are coming. We have also Easter Links now that's gonna keep those Lancers away from Irby. He's spamming more and more Archers on the field all the time. But guess what? Mordo has some great counters to that Archer spam. And all you need to do, and I think that's underrated in Rise of the Witch King, but why would you not just spam Catapults? I feel like that's the biggest weakness of Elves. To deal with Siege Weapons. Especially if you are playing like this, and your army is almost exclusively based on Infantry units, um, it's gonna be almost impossible for Erby's units to reach out to the catapults from Fairy later on, you know? And with that being said, getting some katas, protecting the catapults later on with the Easterlings might be the way to go to deal with the elves in the mid to late game. Going for a counter attack now, but look at the weakness. Do you see what I mean? Like, what is gonna be now, you know, dealing damage to the building when he's gonna go for a catapult expansion like he does? This is gonna make it quite hard! Oh, Irby not in position! And one of the arches is gone just like that. And Fairy, what? Fairy is like, you know what? I'm not gonna waste money now because I know I stopped your attack just like that. Oh, Fairy, Fairy. Nice micro. Eagles can kill catapults. No, of course, Eagles can, can kill catapults, but you are talking about very late game in which Mordo should also have some archers on the field to deal with the Eagles, you know? And Eagles, they're not gonna last forever. And I believe this Haradrim archers from the Haradrim Palace level 3 with the barbed arrow shot with level 2, they are actually dealing a lot of damage to, the, to you know, monsters like Eagles. And uh, Tipalmet, thanks for the follow as well, appreciate it. Welcome. You want, to, you want me to show command points? Yeah, sure. 450 command points for Mordor and 625 for Elves. Oh, he was actually able to scout this mm, slaughterhouse at the top right side, which is pretty nice. I like that. And no arches around this area. He's going now for the barracks number 2. The stable is level 1. And no heroes on the field. We see Gothmog from Mordor, but no heroes on the field from the... Oh, we see Haldir. Okay, my bad. I'm blind. Haldir and Gothmog are the choices from Irby and Fairy. Irby's sister is playing this game by Tracky. <laughs> I did this quite nice. With level 5, with level 8. Oh oh. Bad fight to take for the Lancers. I'm oh, but they are kind of winning this fight still, right? No, no, no. They are forced to retreat. Hinted land was used. And it's a really aggressive playstyle from Mordor. And very defensive playstyle on the other side from Irby as well. Yes, leadership here. But there are just too many units. How can you deal with that? Does he have rallying call on these units, though? Yes, he has. No Easter links? Or not Easter links in, in, in position? They are around this side. 
I'll be destroying the sword, which might, which makes kind of sense because I believe with the sword you are attacking faster, you know. And Haldir is attacking like like kind of twice. Do you see that? Haldir is always like hitting twice with the sword in melee fight. Gothmog is also drawing the sword with the fury. He's gonna be stronger than Haldir, of course. Lances are going for one more trample into the backline. Nice one. Gothmog is chasing down the spikeman in the porcupine formation. Still one shotting down. Fury is still lasting. But Gothmog might be in trouble now. Never mind. Should be fast enough to get away. Uh, during all this time, let's take a look into the command points once again. 600 command points now for er for Fairy, the model player, and Erby has 510. So Fairy is ahead. Power point wise, he has uh, Eye, Warchan, and Tainted Land. Uh oh, Kofmok might be now in trouble. Never mind. I believe he is gonna be safe, right? Unless the Lancers, there is no backup. There are no Easterlings. Are they gonna make it in time to the to the Orc hero? He's abusing the S key on the keyboard. That's so painful to deal with. Help me, you fools. Help me, you fools. Help him, you fools. But he's gonna get help now and he will be able to get away the lenses. They need to be careful now from Erby. They are taking way too much damage. Does he have a well, though? Yes, he has a well, but he has only one. That means he will need to wait ages to heal up over time. Uh, 700 command points available for Mordo and 685 for Elves. And Erby is still in the game. He has also now... Uh, Fairy has also, you know, Mouth of Sauron on the fields now. With a nice and tanky hero. He has 3000 HP with level 1. Quite tanky, actually, against anything but the pikemen on the horrors. Haldir is level 3. Don't shoot this guy. Very smart from Fairy to get dismounted. That's gonna make him way tanky against the pikemen. Let's avoid this lancer, uh, pikemen. Very nice trample, but he needs to be careful. The lancers are almost gone. They're gonna be taken down. Level. Look how fast he's leveling up, dude! What is the splash damage all about? He was level 1. Look how many units he killed on foot. Mouth of Sauron. Popping off. Almost level 4. That's gonna unlock the Doubt, which is the active debuff on the enemy units, nullifying also their leadership bonuses. Which means Hydra's leadership, for example, once he's level 5, is gonna be gone. And he's saying 10,000 phone calls. Erby is a famous player. Like, everyone is calling him. Erby, how can I play Morda? How can I play Engma? How can I... And Erby is also a good-looking boy. Girls are looking. Erby, Erby, Erby. You know? Or boys also. Erby, Erby, Erby. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Almost level 4. Level 5 is gonna be impactful once you are level 5 with the leadership bonuses. Okay, he's going for an attack from the bottom left side. This Lord House is going down. And actually, Erby has a lot of units, but the thing is, this Mouth of Sauron is actually scary on, on food. He's very tanky for the Elven units to deal with. Unless you clump against them or something, you know? But until then, it's kind of hard. A lot of Orcs. Rallying Collar has been used. He has also enough power points now for the, for the Mist. Elven Wood doesn't make any sense in a situation like this. Fairy has now Arrow Volley. That's interesting. He's like, Irby is on phone, maybe he's not seeing it coming. Maybe Irby doesn't see it coming. Irby does see it coming. He will dodge with most of the units and 10 power points wasted just like that. Kofmok has to be extremely careful. Haldir can take him down. Haldir, one more shot and one more attack. And Kofmok is gone and Haldir hits level 5. Just like that. Erobole was kind of waste, but he was still able to win this fight. Level 4 unlocked for Mouth of Sauron. Okay. So this uh, Malon tree in the bottom right side has been taken down by this Easterlings. Lori and Warriors are chasing them down. 675 command points for Mordor, but he will lose this industry, uh, not industry, he will lose this slaughterhouse level 3. That means minus 100 command points. Oh, that's gonna hurt very big time. He's down to 625. 685 now, Irby is once again ahead in terms of command points. He will be potentially able to save this Malone tree at the bottom right with the help of the Lorian Warriors. And Erby is still in the game and Arrow Volley is kind of risky because Industry is so much more reliable. Arrow Volley, you need to kind of hope that your player, that your opponent is not paying attention for it to be actually successful. If you have nothing to stun, of course. Mist is gonna be nice for the next attack. Which is gonna be used now, pretty much. I don't know about this mist. When Mord is disengaging, mist is kind of overkill or waste. And they are both kind of wasting their 10 power points from the spellbook. Fairy wasted um, 
Get over late here and now Mist is being wasted from Irby around this area. Tower, Lumber Mill, Slaughterhouse next to each other at the top right corner. The tower here protect this pathway. And tower here also next. Look, do you see that? He has multiple towers now to make sure that these buildings are kept alive. And Alvin player Irby has zero towers on the field so far. Yeah, he has 6 power points collected, 700 command points available, Mouth of Sauron is gonna be very nice to get him level 7. I believe Evil Eye is gonna deal burst damage to anything what Elven player has on the field right now, including Hydeer for example. A lot of Elven archers, but I'm still level 1, stable level 1, no heroes beside Hydeer, no Entmood, no Mirkwoods, nothing like that. And Mist is gonna be on a huge and long cooldown. He has 5 power points collected which can be invested into the foresight if he, if he wants to, if he needs that. Or after the miss he can go for the eagle alive summon which can be nice against Mordor right now because I believe he has not enough units to deal with the eagles, you know? Uh, looks like Fairy is either going for the catapults or for the black riders. I'm, I'm actually assuming he's gonna go for the catapults because these catapults are gonna hit like a truck in a situation like this. Oh, Micro, nice one. He's paying attention, will be able to get away without riding into the Easterlings. But Irby has to take care of this map control. Maybe also make some towers, you know? It sounds slim, but why not? If your opponent is making it, you can also do it. One tower here would be protecting this pathway. One tower here would be protecting this pathway, you know? But Katas are gonna be taking down this, um, these towers in time anyway. Okay? He's gonna clamp, but the thing is, he will be, you know, facing against two catapult expansion at the same time. And I believe he won't, he won't deal the damage he's looking for. Clamping against the tower. Towers are, from Mordor, not that very strong. Because you cannot put any units inside of that. Gothmog is back in the business. Gothmog level 5 is gonna be actually huge against elves, because that's gonna shut down the effect of Golden Arrow, for example, from Haldi, right? And he's also able to see the tower at the bottom left side. Okay. This Lord of House is going down first. Uh, Doubt will be used now. That's gonna nullify the leadership and also they're gonna lose a lot of damage and armor. Tinted Line will be used for the buff from the Moro player. Ofmok is popping off. He's level 5 now. Glorfindel is gonna be the next hero on the list from Erby. Glorfindel is nice in a situation like this. There are no Easter links nearby. And he's gonna level up like crazy once he's able to attack. Look, he's almost level 3 and... <laughs> Fairy is killing his own stuff. Nice hit. Is he level 3 already? Yes, he's level 3 already, and that means Blade of Purity is unlocked. But Glorfindel got also nerfed this patch. Or this beta. It means he's weaker now in terms of tankiness. So it's, it's gonna be way, way easier for you to kill Glorfindel even through the Blade of Purity, which was nerfed in the version 8.4. It used to give you 100 handed. Okay. Level 5, he will be forced to disengage, the towers are doing a nice job. Glorfindel is gonna be able to finish off this building. He has to avoid trampling down this Easterling store. Back and forth game, 11 power points collected for Mordor. Fairy, he's gonna get some more catapults. No, he is going for the Black Riders. He is going for the Siege Works level 3. Industry was used. 13 power points collected for Irby. That's gonna become scary now because Eagles are gonna be very nice. And I believe um, Fairy like you know needs to see it coming because what Eagles can do in a situation like this, Eagles can kill this catapult expansions, right? And also the katas from the siege works. He has two katas here. Dop will be used. Dop has a really low cooldown, I believe, right? It's actually awaitable every one minute, I believe. Look how fast it's recharging this Dop ability. Oh, 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 be careful! Oh my, that's he's so lucky that he didn't target him at the very. Oh, the shots are coming! Missed. It's a bad fight to take. Oh, the skull. Oof, 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 oof. Look how many units he killed. That's what I'm trying to say. Katas are so good. Kill the Kata with Glorfindel, though. Okay, Glorfindel is popping off. Clumped army, he likes that. He loves that when they are clumped like this because of his splash damage. And we have another hero, guys. Can someone do Treebeard song in the in the stream? Because now we have Treebeard on the field, the favorite hero from everybody. 
All right. Does he have also? Yeah, he has also Armory. I didn't even see that. Armory level two. Come Maybe Armor. My friend. Come, my friend. This is troll. Why are they working like this? Why are they stacking to each other? That kind of makes no sense. <laughs> uh oh, Mouth of Sauron is going down. Glorfindel is saying, I am the true swordsman. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. There we go. Big points, yeah. Of course, when you waste them like this. The eagle summon. It is likely that we <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. You see. Last march of the end. Three beard has to be careful. Has to avoid fighting against this fortress with the catapult expansion. The eagles once again are taking care of this catapult. Black Riders are going for a trample. Gothmog is inside the jeans as well. Dorfindel is level almost 6. Aldir is level almost 7. But I believe Mordor will be able to defend himself this one time. And the Eagles are gonna be gone soon. Looks so pretty and funny when they are going down like this. Black Rider, can he finish him off? It's gonna be really close. Not even close, baby. The Black Rider was able to survive. And Mordor was able to survive. And three beer. Don't trample down the pike, man, my dude. And he's saying grandma talk. He's probably talking with the grandma at the very same time. And playing. That's like called multi-talent in my book. Playing. Eating talking at the same time Herbie is like clicking Q and A probably yes but he was able to save his heroes at least Haldir is almost level 7 level 8 is gonna be kind of useless because Gothmog is have uh, does have also fear resistant now with the iron hand we have 10 power points collected which is gonna be used into the body kit defensively at the bottom left corner and he's actually going for all the 10s from the spellbook. The thing is, Irby can go for the flat now, right? He can literally go for the flat and he's only 17. I mean, only maybe is not the right word, but it's still, you know, only 17 power points away from that. While Fairy is 40 power points away from that. He has to get something for, for 15 first and then for 25. So flat can be impressively strong in a situation like this. Flat like this, you kill every production building. Flat like this, you kill Siege Works in the Slaughterhouse level 3, you know? Okay. Katas are sieging. He has one catapult, right? Two catapults, actually. They have also ends now. Mirkwoods on the field. No Silvertown arrow purchase just yet. It's level 2. You need to get it to level 3 for that. I believe with the Silvertown arrows, you are also dealing way more damage to the, to the catapults, if I'm not mistaken. Glorfindel is doing a nice job. No, that's not Glorfindel. That's Mouth of Sauron. I'm actually curious, guys, how much damage Evil Eye from Mouth of Sauron would deal to a hero like Glorfindel, for example, when he is not using the Blade of Purity. I mean, we will get the chance potentially to see this in this game because Mouth of Sauron is almost level 6 and Evil Eye is going to be unlocked with level 7. The Kata is still doing a nice job, but the end is going to be able to take him down. There we go. Last it. Uh, we have also Gothmog here, level 3. Malon 3 is going to be the target of Orcs and Gothmog. No, no Gothmog here. This will protect itself against Orcs, no big deal. This is also level 3. And I believe he's going to be able to save this with the Mirkwoods just in time. Freebet is back in the business from the end mode. And it looks like the Alvin player is going to look for another attack. Thing is, look his power points. He's only 10 power points away now. Only 10 power points away. 
Nine power points now. The power points are rising. Half of Sauron is level six. This Black Riders, they need to avoid fighting the Spikemen. Mist is available now, but there are too many catapults to deal with, you know? Tower expansions are coming up. Catapult expansion, catapults on the field also from the Siege Wargs. That's gonna be tough now to kill these buildings. I'm, I'm assuming he needs to wait now for the for the blood, you know? Oh, be careful with the Black Riders! Oh, he's pressing S in time, but losing them. Oh, he was, he's going for the Cloud Break and using it immediately. Now the Black Riders are gonna be gone because they are also getting stunned. Gothmog was not nearby, that's why they are stunned, by the way. Heroes, but look how much damage he's taking. He has to use heal, 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 heal. Otherwise, he's gonna go down. Heal is gonna be used. They are taking so much damage from these level 3 buildings. And Glorfindel is not that strong against a level 3 building, by the way. Arvin would be one-shotting that one with level 6. He's gonna be still able to take it down eventually, but he's gonna lose Glorfindel for that. Is this really worth it? I'm not sure. He needs to run for his life, but I believe it's too late. Can he get away, though? Can he get away from this situation? I believe Morde has not much left anymore, right? No, Morde is actually kind of doomed. The ends are going to war in melee fight, taking care of these towers. This tower is going to be taken down next. The level 3 slaughterhouse is gone. Glorfindel is still alive. He's dodging like in the Matrix. All the shots from the catapults. Imagine Lambert Milwaukee turning on him and killing him. He's dodging everything. Oh, he's using the thingy. Gorgoroth's Spire Fireball, but it has a minimum range, so you cannot use it on top of the fortress, and he was not able to hit anything with that, you know? I cannot believe it. You guys said Mordor won this, Mordor won this. No, Irby got this. And guess what? The score is gonna be even now. 2-2, two, two, and we're gonna see the tiebreaker in the game number 5. Why do you hate Arvin? I don't hate Arvin. I feel like level 6 flat is just insanely strong. Hey Nikki, welcome. GG well played here. Arvin needs 5 minutes. That's absolutely fine. He deserves the 5 minutes. It's fine. Look, look, they want to continue other day because it's kind of, of course, it's like exhausting. Best of 9. Best of, I mean, normally it was best of nine, but it's actually best of seven. Let's see if they want to play more games. That's the question. Harry has been defeated. The score is 2-2. Dwarves against Goblins. Uh, it's a quite uh, interesting matchup. It's a mobile faction uh, matchup. Dwarves and Goblins. I like this one a lot. On a brand new map, which means the players don't have too much experience on a map like this. On the right side, we have the pink Dwarven player Fairy against the yellow Goblin player Erby on the left side. This was really, really uh, close series. I mean, you can see the scoreboard yourself. It's 2-2. And whoever wins four games is gonna be the winner. Which for Erby would mean he's gonna get, uh, he's gonna protect his spot, the third spot. And for Fairy, it would mean that he's gonna kick Irby from his spot and claim the spot for himself, okay? So Fairy has to win a lot. I mean, he's gonna win a lot if he wins against Irby. He's gonna jump two, uh, two spots forward. Two tunnels into the Goblin Cave, into the third tunnel coming up from Irby. The Slovenian player on the left side, Hisoka, welcome, Velinorian, welcome. And on the other side, we see two mineshafts into the All of Warriors. That is the plan. And yeah, hopefully after finishing this series between these two players, we're gonna also get to see the series between Ave Havi against Mr. Smog. Which also gonna be awesome. I am and Fight for me. And I will hold your oaths fulfilled. What say you? Be fight. Two goblin keeps coming up for Erby now on the left side. All of warriors into the pikemen start from fairy, so I'm assuming he's trying to creep this. Uh oh, the old is scouting from Erby, he has to be careful though. Fairy is gonna creep this one. This is the plan. So what he's gonna do, he's gonna use his builder to lure this troll away from the lair. And then the pikemen, as the troll is retreating, he's not gonna be able to attack. 
The pikemen are gonna be able to creep this troll quite easily. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. Look at this now. That might be a little bit too early from Fairy though. The troll eventually gonna turn around now and fight. Oh, that was kind of kind of early, but I think it's still fine. Even without the help of the Buildum, you are still able to creep, but it's gonna take you more time. And also, you're gonna potentially lose some of the units. He's putting fire, <laughs> I mean water, on the Builder from uh, Irby as he's scouting the area. Uh oh guys, Irby is gonna try to steal the lair. I mean, steal the money from the lair. He's not able to attack, but he's able to steal the money. And Fairy has to be careful about this. Don't risk the biscuit. Oh, that's gonna be close. That's gonna be really close. But the builder might be trapped. Uh oh, okay. Oh, 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 one part of the money has been secured by Irby, but all the other money went for er for Fairy, which is quite good. The Goblin Warriors, they can always disengage because they are way, way faster than the Guardians, so they are in a good spot. Trust me. Hi, Bilba Baggins, welcome. Marcid, welcome. Alright, the mineshaft is gonna get targeted, but I'm assuming he won't be able to take it down just yet because Guardians, they should be easily able to protect this one. We have one Goblin Warrior now potentially gonna pressure this mineshaft, but again, he's in the range of the Fortress, which means he will have protection. There is a future coming up very early for Erby, actually, guys, after three tunnels around the Fortress. He has right now 350 command points only, while Fairy has 400 command points. He is going for the transition now into the Archer range for the Extrovers. Which is gonna be a nice choice, I believe, not only against the Goblin Warrior spam, but also... Hey, thanks for the follow! Couch lands, appreciate that. And uh, not only against the Goblin Warriors, but also against the uh, half Swordsman. Swordsmen. So the plan is gonna be to use those Guardians as a tanking unit in the front line. And then you can use the extra voice as the DPS unit, like an archer pretty much from the back line. Okay? That's the plan. And he was also able to creep this one, by the way, which means he's gonna get more and more money, experience points, and also power points from the spellbook. Uh, zero creep so far for Irby, but he's creep grouping around this area for a Warchant play, I'm assuming, right? Warchant is available. Fairy didn't pick anything just yet, but he missed, he's gonna go for the Rallying Call anyway. I believe this is not gonna be successful, because look at Fairy's defense. He has a lot of units ready to defend himself, you know? And I gotta be honest with you, I like this playstyle more. This playstyle seems a little bit more passive, but I believe if you can save your mineshafts early on and group a big army, your first push is gonna hit like a truck. So I like this from Fairy. Let's see if he can actually execute this one to the victory, which is gonna be the first tiebreaker because Fairy, if you don't know, was leading the series 2-0 and then Irby ended up winning two games in a row. The builder is getting sniped. Is he gonna die? No, he's not gonna die. Isengard. Uh, he won't also die to the poison. So let's that's what I'm trying to say. Look, Fairy's defense. Like he's always on spot, he's always paying attention, he's always watching. And that's the reason why it's gonna be very hard for Irby to deal the damage he's looking for. He might be able to snipe this mineshaft potentially if he clumps very nicely, and I think that's gonna be also the case. Rallying call has been used on only two units. And he's splitting them, by the way. That means he will be targeting those two tunnels at pretty much the same time. And Irby has nothing to defend himself, that's why he's forced to demolish his buildings immediately. Why? Because he doesn't want his opponent fairy to get power points and experience points. Which for those guardians would mean if they hit level 2, they're gonna unlock the charge attack. In the meantime, fairy is also being able to defend himself, but he lost this uh, tunnel or mineshaft. He lost this mineshaft there as well. And he was building a wall up to save the builder. He's recovering over time. Builders are able to heal up over time. It would be kinda bad if you couldn't. Imagine running around with a builder with 1 HP, that would be kind of crazy. Hello, um, your YouTube video just popped up, so I, I have all day watching your content. <laughs> nice. This YouTube video you would be watching today. The 1 vs 7 in BFME 1 with the outputs, holy moly guys, this was... This was the hardest challenge ever, ever. But we made this happen, I would say I'm probably the first person who ever made this happen. Now, I don't want to be... Uh, I want I don't want to be too confident, but I believe this is gonna be nearly impossible to manage. Might be able to save this. That's gonna be really, really close. And he will be able to save this one with the after all swordman, which is quite nice. So let's take a look into the current command points and power points, shall we? Barry, on the right side, has 450 command points collected. Around nine power points available after the rallying call. We have Warchan and five power points only for Irby. He has 400 command points, so Irby is quite behind. He lost another tunnel in the middle of the map. <clears throat> and look at the situation. There is a mineshaft from Fairy. 
He's gonna keep up the pressure 24-7. But taking a fight with the pikeman against the afterall swordman is gonna be a mistake. But this tunnel is gonna be taken down regardless. Which is good because that's gonna cut off the opportunity from Erby to enter this, mine, uh, this tunnel in order to save this tunnel against those guardians. Because this tunnel, as you can see, is quite slow. So Erby has now body blocked with this goblin warriors. That's the plan. He needs to surround his own tunnel. Deny the enemy units to target this one. Because this is one of the starting tunnels and it's very important to keep it alive. The first hero of the game is going to be the King Brand from Dwarves. Yeah, I like this hero a lot, guys. Hobbit allies summon. Oh, but the goblins are dying very fast. And even though they are outnumbering the opponent big time, but goblins are still only goblins and they are gonna die quite fast, you know? So half throws swordsmen are needed, but remember, he lost the opportunity by losing this tunnel here. Build is getting around this area, he will be able to scout this mineshaft, but, you know, Fiery might try to defend this one with the King Brand, Guardians, and extra ways if he wants to. The Hobbits are still alive, they're gonna be definitely able to destroy this tunnel, no big deal. It's also level 2 now, that means Erby is gonna lose 75 of his command points, but Fiery isn't done yet. He's gonna keep up the pressure all the time. Guardians, extra ways are moving, this tunnel is gone, just like that. This is gonna be his next target. He has no units inside the tunnel as well. Like, Erby is losing a lot, while not being able to deal any kind of counter damage to Fairy's economy. This, uh, you know, this one unit cannot deal too much damage if Fairy decides to defend himself. Uh, Brent is gonna get some experience here. Once he's level 2, that's gonna unlock the slam shot, which means slam. Like, you can, you know, deal multiple, uh, I mean, not multiple, you can deal great damage to multiple units at the same time. And the Goblin Caves from the Goblin Faction, alongside with the Orc Pits from the Moro Faction, are very vulnerable too. They have only 1500 HP. It means destroying them is also not a big deal. So Erby is definitely falling apart. And winning this is gonna, you know, give you a huge advantage. Because that's gonna be the breakpoint. When Fairy wins this and he wins the upcoming game as well, he will be the winner of the series. It's a best of 7 after all, right? But hopefully this is not going to be the only series today. I'm excited about the series between Ave Have and Mr. Smog. Ave Have was doing a nice job the other day against uh, TJ. So let's see how he's going to perform against uh, Mr. Smog himself. Mr. Smog is in the second spot right now in the top 10 list. And um, Ave Have is the spot in the spot number 4. So if Ave Have wins against Smoky. He will get the sm spotty from the smoky. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Goblins are dying very quickly against his extra overs and King Brand. Slamshot is gonna be used now for the first time. There we go. Like mentioned before, you are able to hit multiple units at the same time. Even if you don't kill them all, you are able to disable them for multiple seconds. The only weakness from dwarves is the lack of mobility, but that's not being an issue right now because he has mineshaft around the bottom right side. He has a mineshaft here as well. So he doesn't need to walk all the way. He will also be able to protect his mineshaft right next to him. Barry has right now 575 command points. No, 5, 575 command points indeed. He has 8 power points collected already after the Hobbit allies summon and the Rallying Cold. While uh, the power points from Erby are not looking that great. He has enough power points now for the Wildman of Dunland, which I believe is going to be the best choice. But also you can go for potentially for the uh, Scavenger. Which can be also nice. He's gonna go whatsoever for the Wildman of Dunland and he's gonna use them defensively. No battle wagon means you cannot burst them down fast enough. But he has extra overs, multiple units, guardians, uh, and yeah, really strong units. With the Wildman, he will hope that he can defend this area. But there is a tower coming up for Fairy in the backside. He can always put this extra overs inside the tower once it's up. And that's gonna be also the plan from Fairy. The thing is, towers are very vulnerable. However, dwarves can always go for rebuild if he needs that. Howdy, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. The tower is up on the fields now. Um, this tunnel is going to be taken down once again from those guardians. It's one of the starting tunnels from Erby. He's actually quite low now in terms of money income. The tower is still remaining on the field. The Wildmen are going to be able to steal money whenever they are able to, uh, to attack the building, as you can see. And the building is going down quite fast. The towers are actually not very hard to deal with anymore, since they have only 1,500 HP. And the extra words are going to die right after. So not a, not a bad defense from Erby at all. Uh, thanks for the follow, man. Appreciate that. Welcome. Okay. So in the meantime, 
I mean, the thing is, Erby also has to deal now some counter damage to Fairy, who is now pretty much untouched around this side. However, this mineshaft, as you can see, is quite low. And I can see Erby is kind of coming back to this game. Because the Hobbit allies summon was not doing too much work, he was only able to destroy one of the tunnels, which is, for a summon like Hobbits, not great enough, you know? If he can destroy this uh, mineshafts next to his base around the left side, I think Erby is gonna be in a great spot, because once again, if you cut down the mob mobility part from these mineshafts, from dwarves, uh, they're gonna struggle because they are very immobile, running away. As you can see, in many many situations, it's not even an option because you will get caught all the time. You are quite slow. No heroes from goblins, by the way, guys. There is King Brian still lurking around somewhere, I'm assuming. I don't see King Brian still. Where is he? Is he dead or something? I'm not sure. I can't see King Brian on the field whatsoever. Lots of goblins from RB. He's still in the game. Three goblin caves. He's spamming goblins all the time. And yeah, Fairy is getting outnumbered big time. It was looking great for Fairy, don't get me wrong. But Erby was actually patient, he was being focused, he was actually playing carefully. And not giving up as well. Uh, they are trying to destroy this tunnel before they go down. They know attacking the Afterall Swatman is not gonna achieve too much, but the Afterall Swatman are actually one-shotting this extra overs, as you can see. Almost one-shotting them. And the tunnel will be protected for now. Also, this mineshaft here has been taken down. There is only one mineshaft remaining at the top side. That's the closest mineshaft to the side of Erby. If he can destroy this mineshaft, he will be in a great spot. Trust me on that one. Goblin swarm, actually a lot of goblins. Hobbit allies is ready. And Fairy might be forced to use this defensively. I believe he lost one of the builders, that's why he was reviving them. Or one of them. Nine power points collected after rebuild, rallying coal, and hobbits. Everything is available as well. There's only this one level 3 mineshaft from the beginning of the game, that's all. Warchant is being used as a massive Warchant. And Fairy is getting surrounded big time. Even Hobbits in a situation like this wouldn't change too much, because Rallying Call was used now offensively. Very interesting. Are they going for a potential beast trade? I'm not sure, but this mineshaft is going down. That's for sure. I mean, kind of risky move from Fairy in a situation like this to use his buff and Hobbit allies summon offensively. I don't know if this is a great choice or not. Because how much damage can you potentially deal with this army now? As he has three goblin caves and spamming goblins every five seconds. Like by the time you reach this area, he's gonna have more units so you need to deal with. Spider allies will be used now from Erby on the other side offensively. The power points are rising though and he's going to get Dwarven riches. Which is gonna be used immediately. Rebuild is available to save this level 3 mineshaft, but. Sneaky little hobbits is they are. They are not doing too much though. They are not doing too much. He's using this um, dwarven mineshaft, uh, dwarven riches on this mineshaft at the top side. Because he knew that he cannot protect this level 3 anyway to the spiders. I believe Fairy is gonna be able to defend himself for now. He's not defeated just yet, but he took a lot of damage and he's gonna drop down. To only 300 command points after losing this mineshaft. Against the power of mortal, there can be no victory. There can be absolutely no victory against the power of goblins in this case. Erby is popping off this game. He was so down, he was behind so much. I don't know what happened, what was the breakpoint, what was the turning around. I cannot tell you guys. But I can tell you Erby was trying hard. And he was also able to keep himself in the game. Guardians are very tanky, but they are getting baited into the range of the fortress as Azok is joining the battlefield as the first hero from Erby, the goblin player. The power points are rising, but you can see that dwarves have barely any units around. Like, he has nothing. This mineshaft is going down. He's down to 425 command points. We have 600 command points available for Erby, the yellow goblin player on the left. And he has not even a single battle expansion around the fortress either. So he's all, look at this, look how well, well he's expanding. Do you see that at the bottom side? He has multiple tunnels, expanding while putting pressure. That's what I'm expecting from Erby. And that's also the reason why, he's, why he is definitely in the top three spot in my list. And of course, everyone who is against that statement of mine is of course able to challenge Erby for his spot. But don't underestimate him because he was not very active in the last months and weeks. But if he is playing, he is gonna shine. Bright like a diamond. Fairy is saying no, because this mineshaft is going down for sure. That's the one with the dwarven riches on it. 
I believe he won't be able to protect this. The builder cannot build a wall up here because he won't be in the range to do that. To do that. He's trying to build a tower. Rallying Call is going to be used even defensively, but he's getting outnumbered big time. Azok is also there. Half Trolls fought, man. They should be outperforming against the Guardians. No big deal. The Manchild is going down. It's the last hope of Theory. What a great performance it is from Irby here in this one. Azok is leveling up. The Dwarven Riches Mineshaft has been taken down as well. Yes, 11 power points collected. Committing now against the Hall of Warriors. Revealed is available. He can use it. He should be using it definitely to save this one. But it's not going to be the case. Yes, Fairy is dropping down to 400 command points. Irby is up to 700. Azok is also now level 2, which means he's gonna get money every time he kills enemy units. White Man of Dunland was used as well. They're also able to steal money with the pillage. So not only Fairy has not an, a lot of money left, but also the money he has is gonna be stolen by this, by this mighty White Man of Dunland, just like that. You know? That's gonna be a tough one. That's gonna be really a tough one. Our points are rising. But I believe this might be the end. This might be the end of the game number 5 at least, but not the end of the series just yet. We have at least one more game to go for. If Erby wins, of course, the upcoming game, he will be the winner of the series. But if Fairy is gonna win the upcoming game, the score is gonna be even once again. And then we're gonna have the final match. As we see darkness, as we see darkness, you know, goblins are glowing. I like this glow effect from the goblins or from the units from the goblins when they are using the darkness. He looks so cool. Darkness is underrated too. Because darkness is always able to stack for the entire map it works. It works with leadership, it works with path, so you can make your units pretty much really really strong. Barry is saying maybe I should be making battle wagon. Or we saying yeah, definitely. GG well played. GG well played indeed, and every one of you who was betting on Irby in the game number 5 is gonna get some points now. Game over. In the juiciest Mordor mirror ever. On a huge map as well. Oh, that's gonna be fiesta. For sure. So, we have the yellow Mordor player Irby against the pink Mordor player Fairy. This, guys, is the map Jungles of Far Harad, which is looking like this. It's a massive map, as you can see. Which means, there is a high chance that we see a late game Mordor Miro in this one. I will be used now from uh, Fairy to scout the area. Irby might also start with the eye, but he's not using it. Okay, he's not using it. Uh, the reason, of course, why I, why I, not Warchant, is uh, you sacrifice a little bit of your early game uh, by not choosing the war chant. However, your mid game is going to be stronger if you can skip war chant and go for the industry pretty much immediately. You know, that's the reason why I of Sauron. And um, I'm assuming early on we're gonna see orcs fighting all around the place. That's gonna be awesome to watch because I I like the spam wars. And later on we might see something like mountain trolls, drama trolls, witch king, nazgûls, felblies, black riders. I mean Mordor, let's be honest, has so many options. So many options. You can even go for Moma kills if you want to, you know? In this, in this case, one of these players definitely, definitely is gonna build an army worthy of Mordor. Yes. Uh, in Rise of the Witch King in the patch 2.02, uh, even if you are picking random, you always know the matchup because it's random revealed, you know? It's not a mod we are using, it is just how the patch 2.02 works for Rise of the Witch King. So they know the faction, they know the matchup. Uh, that's an early troll cage coming up for Fairy. Let's go. Okay, I like it, I like it. In the meantime, on the other side, Irby is building up more and more Oryx. Three Oryx pits now against one Oryx pit only. That means he will be definitely able to outspam his opening big time. And this Troll Kitch, I like that, but it might be a little bit too early. You know? It might be too early. So Mountain Trolls on its way. We shall see. We shall see. I mean, this is the issue, right? So sending out the units, Oryx in this case, one by one forward. It's a bad fight to take for Fairy because this is the eye from uh, Irby. He's gonna make sure that he's gonna dominate this fight. And the eye doesn't only give you armor and damage leadership. 
but also gives you combat experience leadership. That means your units are able to level up faster. So we're gonna have a three versus one situation and indeed uh, Irvi is now going even for the Haradrim Palace which is gonna give him the chance to recruit some Easterlings as a counter unit to the Mountain Trolls from Mordor. The thing is, for example, your, your attack trolls, if you're ever gonna get, recruit them, are they gonna be also a counter unit to the Mountain Trolls from your opponent because with the, with the level two you can steal the Mountain Trolls from your opponent just like that. Irby, of course, is gonna have the pressure advantage now because he has multiple Orc Pits against only one Orc Pit. It's gonna be hard for Fairy to defend himself with one Orc Pit only. That's the reason why I'm assuming he's gonna use his second troll now for defense. The first one is gonna try to put pressure. With the rocks, uh, uh, you know, rock, rocks are, you know, kinda underrated, guys. Oh, go back a little bit. Don't take free damage for no reason. Yeah, just like that. Oh, Moonwalking. And that's trolls are sometimes so so annoying to micro with, you know? Eat them. You can also eat uh, enemy orcs, by the way, to recover, if you don't know. Eat them. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Eat them, troll. Eat them. Look this pink pink troll. <laughs> Alright, he's forced to retreat without being able to deal any kind of damage because every time he wanted to attack the slaughterhouse, the fortress was shooting him down. But he could, over, uh, he could have just eaten one of the orcs and recover if he wanted to. On the other side, one orc pit. Yeah, that's the thing. One orc pit. But I like the fact that Fairy is expanding offensively. Do you see that? That's very nice. I like that. Because Erby, for now at least, is actually using only these two pathways to send units forward. He's not checking the side lanes, which means Fairy is able to do whatever he wants around this area. You know? Especially around an area like this. At the bottom left side, at the side from Irby, you know, Irby won't expect this one, of course. The trolls are gonna be new, are gonna be used now for defense, which makes sense. And at some point of the game, Irby has to make sure to make multiple Easterlings and Orc Arches if he wants to be able to defend himself. But it's not about the damage you are dealing in most of the time. It's about the pressure you are creating with sending a troll forward. Look how many units now he has to be wasting, potentially wasting, right? Just to be able to deal with one of the mountain trolls. That's three units against one. And they cost in total also as much as the Stroll, even more. Easter Links they cost 300, Orc Arches they cost 250. So this has more. Oh, 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 oh Baton! Don't let your kids watch it! I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I'm speechless. Sometimes I really don't know what to say. <laughs> Alright, this slaughterhouse is gonna be eventually taken down. The troll is already damaged. Uh, they also nerfed in the patch 8.4 the amount of experience you gain from killing stuff, enemy units or enemy buildings. So leveling up now your troll to level 2 is of course much, much harder. And losing the troll is always painful, you know. If you lose a troll, you fall really behind. That's the, that's the problem. Orcs in the front, Orc Arches in the behind, East Selings, and this fight is looking great for Irby. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like this idea of going for a Troll Cage, but I don't like the idea of going for a Troll Cage after one Orc Pit only, you know? Because what's the matter of going for a Troll Cage if you, first of all, have to, you know, use them for defense all the time? Doesn't make any sense for me. I feel like in this matchup, you know what would be awesome to get on the field? Definitely, a Fell Beast. Because look at the size of the map. So if you cannot do anything else, you can always use your fell beast to fight for the map control. You can deal you can deal crazy amount of damage to the slaughterhouses from the opponent's model player. And with that, you can always ink, you know, kind of snowball your lead to victory much, much easier with a fell beast. On a gigantic map like this, fell beast, most mobile hero in the game. You know? Gonna force your opponent to make multiple arches as well. And if he has multiple arches, you don't need to fight against them. You can always use them to kill farms. Just like that. Tower is coming up now for, uh, now for Fairy. Mortar Tower is kind of weak. Because you're not even able to put any units inside. Uh, Irby is expanding very nicely. And let's take a look into the current command points and power points. So Fairy has right now 525 command points. 9 power points collected and 1 power point away from getting the industry unlocked. And Irby has actually less power points but more command points than his opponent. 
Powerpoint wise, he's behind. That means Fairy is going to be the first one who's getting the power points now for the industry, which is going to be, of course, very helpful because that's going to help him to save for the Fair Beast. I'm, I'm pretty certain that you can actually eat one of the Oryx to heal up. Industry is going to be chosen. I don't know why Fairy is not trying to do that. Maybe he doesn't know. But I'm pretty, I'm 100% sure actually that you can eat now one of these Oryx and heal up. Imagine if there are only Oryx you need to deal with. And imagine this would have no cooldown. So you could hit, eat, hit, eat, hit, eat. Oh, he's moonwalking. Sometimes it's hard to micro with the trolls. They are not very, very intelligent. Creatures of Middle Earth. He's running. And in the speed arm, they also nerf the movement speed. You can see and maybe feel it that the mountain trolls now are slightly moving slower. This tower is going to put a lot of work. The reason is simple because Irby's main force right now are Oryx. He's going to eat now one of the one of the Oryx and the regeneration got also nerfed to 30% HP only. So you are not able to heal up to full HP. So not only you are healing less, but also it has cooldown, right? It has 30 seconds cooldown. You'll be able to scout this slaughterhouse now at the bottom left side. It has been taken down. But he's moving for a counter attack with a lot of orc catches on the field. The orc spam is real. Irby has also another power points he needs for the industry. But he needs to be wise about the choice. I would say this is going to be the best slaughterhouse to use to industry on it because this has the protection of the two orc pits next to each next to each other, you know? So it's like a sandwich protection. It's hard for the troll to commit against this one without getting into the range of the fortress. That's the reason why he's going to choose this slaughterhouse to use the industry on. If this makes sense for you guys. Because when it comes to use industry, you want to make sure that you can keep the building, like furnace, slaughterhouse, or whatsoever, also protected for a long time. That is still the slaughterhouse here, Irby was not able to see. It means he's gonna get so much money from this one. Look at this level. It's almost level 2. And no one, I mean, Irby was only capturing this one, yeah. This one is under control from Fairy, so that means he's gonna be able now. To see this orcs coming I, I you know he was able to see them that's why he's now moving downstairs in order to catch them before they reach out to the slaughterhouses right the troll cage is level one only five power points collected for fairy two power points collected for Irby. it means fairy can potentially go for the war chant and no trolls so far right from Irby. what is Irby saving for fairy has almost the money for the fairbies do you see that guys But I'm, I think he's going for the Mouth of Sauron, which I don't like to see that much. He's definitely going for Mouth of Sauron, guys. I don't like that. That is Gollum. I feel like Felb is, is much more impactful in a situation like this. Flyers. The creep secured by Irby. The slaughterhouse has been taken down from Irby by Fairy with the troll. Trolls are putting a nice work. I like that. And at least he's forcing Irby to make multiple Easterlings, you know, that's also something. With a lot of Orcs on the field, 3 Orc Pits still for Irby. Let me check the money from Irby, he has almost 2000 as well. So he can go for the Fair Beast, and you will see what I mean. If he has the money for the Fair Beast, that's gonna be a game changing moment. Because these trolls, they're gonna be all of a sudden absolutely useless. What can, what can they do against Fair Beast? They're gonna die in a second. In Mouth of Sauron, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm awaiting now Mouth of Sauron now from the fortress. I might be wrong, but let's see. He couldn't buy... Oh, he bought a Felbis. Oh, my bad. He bought a Felbis. Indeed, you guys, you guys are right. My bad. It's a Felbis and his name is Camille, guys. And Irby has uh, no power, no money for the Felbis. He has money now for the Felbis. But his command points kept, so he cannot recruit. He lost another slaughterhouse. He has more units than he's allowed to. He lost even another slaughterhouse, just like that. A lot of money, but no, but no room for the for the command points. By the time maybe he gets the money, I mean he gets the command points available for the fair beast. He might also try to go for the witch king instead, because look his money. He has four thousand almost, right? And witch king costs what five thousand? When you can afford it, go for the witch king. It's better. The thing is, witch king got nerfed this patch from Mordor. You are not able to apply. Um, the debuff anymore if you are flying on your felbies so you need to get dismounted if you want to be able to debuff the enemy units which king is on its way guys which king against felbies let's see which king is on his way from Irby. Abe, you play against mr smog after this one are you ready you was not online in discord my friend welcome by the way yeah 
he's gonna potentially lose all the farms and be kept all the time i believe i feel that as well but erby lost a lot of units so he has <laughs> he has command points but now he has no units on the field you have three trolls from fairy here the nazgul is doing a nice job there he is creeping at the same time and he's extending this way also his lead extremely Felbis is almost level 2 and once again you can always use him for the map control fights that's what I was trying to say I mean Fairy has now almost full command points available as you can see he has 13 power points available 15 and he can go for the Worm and Worm is so nice in a match in a situation like this imagine Worm here right you kill the Slaughterhouse level 3 you kill the Orc Piss that's gonna hurt Erby so much and he's getting closer and closer to unlock the Worm from the spellbook like almost two shotting the Slaughterhouse is just like that Maybe Haradrim Arches could be a nice choice from both the players to deal with the Fell Beast. And we have Witch King now from Erby, guys. Witch King is on the field. But look at this. In the meantime, Fairy is just getting a second. No man can kill me. I am no man. I am a Fell Beast. Okay, the trolls are gonna die quite fast now to the Witch King. He's gonna lose all the trolls, but 15 power points collected now. And again, he can just go for the Worm here. The trolls are getting killed in a second from the Witch King. He's almost level 3 immediately the second he joined the battlefield. But he has to deal with two Felbys at the same time. Morgomir and Camille next to each other. Worm is available now from Fairy. Use it here. That's the perfect place. Industry is going to be used for the second time now. Again in the front side of the Slaughterhouse. And the Witch King is getting targeted by the two Felbys at the same time. It's a 2v1 situation. Yes, the Witch King is stronger. But uh, not stronger enough to deal with two of them at the same time the field the thing is witch king has more damage only i believe right witch king has the same hp because if you don't know this hp from the witch king is not scaling until the uh, unless the witch king unlike the witch king from engma has always 6000 hp no man can kill me hi gimpy welcome barking welcome joy welcome and uh, he's level three but he has still the same hp like with level one you know so unlike the Witch King from Engma, he's scaling with the with the say it with the levels. Burr must use indeed the slaughterhouse has been taken down, the orc pit has been taken down. He has still a lot of time. He's gonna reposition. And the worm is actually taking a lot of damage, but not enough damage. And he should be able to destroy the slaughterhouse as well, right? He has time. He can he can two-shot this one, by the way. One. And the second one and it's gone that's 200 command points gone from rb just like that cannot even do too much with the witch king right because he has to deal with two at the same time boromir thanks for the follow appreciate that welcome to the stream we have army at the left side from fairy and fairy has full command points and rb is down 500 to 500 command points so double the command points available for um for fairy and the thing is, Irby has also not even the power points he needs just yet for his own worm. He's three power points away from this point. While Gary was able to collect five power points after the worm already. So definitely Ave Havi was having a point. Getting a Fel Beast first on the field and gives you a lot of room and potential. It means you can kill multiple slaughterhouses. And your opponent is either gonna run out of command points, so he won't be even able to invest the money he has, or he's gonna lose a lot of map control and units. And both of these situations were happening to Irby in this game. Because Fairy was the first one who was getting the mount uh, the Felbys on the field. And also the trolls were putting a lot of pressure. Kinda interesting choice from Irby to not go for the mobile units on a map like this. Easter links, of course, are a great counter unit to the trolls, but they are very mobile. How can you ever catch a troll with them, you know? You can always hit and run. And it's a gigantic map. So having mobile units on a map like this, maybe even some Lancers could be nice. You can be using that for the pressure. Now look at the situation. Three against one. Yes, also a Witch King. Look at this. <laughs> it looks so funny. Irby's Witch King is getting bullied. Just like that and going down. He's getting dismounted, but that is not gonna save you, my friend. That is not gonna save you, Witch King. Run for your life. Your no man can kill you. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? One more hit and you are goners. You are goners. Don't say no man can kill me anymore. Are you sure about that? And he's down. He's down, okay? He called by he killed he got killed by his own kind. 
Witch King against Witch King. And now we have a Witch King fight. Irby against uh, this. Irby is going to lose another Fair Beast, I believe, right? Yeah, Irby is going to lose a lot of... This Witch King is a killer, guys. This Witch King from Fairy is a killer. You have no power. He's a killer, dude. Look, he's killing Fair Beast, Witch King, everything. The Switch King is like, I am the true Witch King. Get out here, Irby Switch King. Almost level 4, he killed the Witch King, he killed the Fair Beast. Irby lost them both. He has nothing left on the field anymore. That can kill with these trolls, by the way. It's a matter of time. Irby is down to 525. The Worm is doing a nice job, don't get me wrong. But is this gonna be enough? He needs to kill this Slaughterhouse level 3. And this one level 2. I mean, he has to do, he has to do a lot. He's repositioning himself all the time, which pretty much has zero cooldown, so you can keep repositioning yourself all the time. Witch King is not dealing too much damage to the Worm. Did you see that? He's not even hurting him. But GG is gonna be called from Irby. We have the Yellow Man of the West player, Irby, against the Pink Goblin player, Fairy, at the bottom side. So, two tunnels coming up for the Goblin player. And Farm into a forward Parax is gonna come up for the Man of the West player. He's saying thank you very much. Because he's happy that he gets to play the Goblin faction. So, yeah, Goblins, they didn't receive too many changes in this beta, actually, beside against Mordor. Uh, the only changes they got so far, I believe, are to Goblin Arches and Goblin uh, Spider Riders. But again, this only affects the matchup between Goblins and Mordor. But other than that, I believe they are pretty much untouched. Uh, two tunnels into the spider pit coming up for the goblin player. A forward Parax coming up for Irby, the man of the west player. But Lynx nerfed versus Kev. Oh, okay, so Lynx got nerfed against Cavalry, but giant just minus 10 damage. So, I mean, you know that spider Lynx were a great counter to the Gondonites, for example, right? So that's gonna be still a thing, but it's gonna be less effective. I believe. I don't like this that much, though. I mean, it can work out, but it's a, like, you know, win or die moment. Because what's gonna ha eventually happen is he has mobile units on the fields now with the spider links and you have zero protection around this area. So you're gonna lose both the farms because, yeah, the fortress is gonna protect them but you're gonna still lose them, I believe. So Irby has to make something happen. He's gonna start with the pikeman first. It looks like you wanna creep this goblin layer right after. I mean, work layer, sorry, not goblin layer. Goblin layer is this guy. This is the goblin layer, fairy. He has to creep him to win this game. Hey Smokey, welcome. Okay. So Spider Links, they should not take a fight here against the Rohan Spearman units. The Rohan Spearman units, they also got buffed. Soldiers next. Uh, they are coming out really fast, but he's not recruiting more soldiers. He has to cancel and abort this building if he is getting targeted more because you get money back. And Fairy is looking to steal, steal the money from the creep. I mean, they are quite mobile, right? Killing this doesn't matter anything. You need to kill the rubble to get experience. Uh oh, that's gonna be close. That's a, that's a mistake from... He got the money, but that's a mistake from Irby. You know, why would you not attack the Leia? Now he has almost level 2. Because he got the last hit on the rubble. He's gonna put pressure, and that's the tricky part about the spider links. They are really tricky because they are quite mobile, and this infantry unit from the Man of the West player, Irby, won't get the chance to catch them. Microing around quite nicely, but... Don't take too much damage, the farm is gonna be protected for now. He's gonna now lead forward with two spider links. He might even use the Warchan if he wants to. And he can kill all these farms in a second. Zero defense. But he has also no defense. How many goblin warriors he has? He has one. Going, going for the arches next, and that's gonna be a push now from Irby. Rallying call is of course available. Is he gonna use the Warchan offensively now? That's gonna be the question. He was able to destroy this, or, you know, he was forcing Irby to demolish this farm. And I believe that's gonna be also the case around this side. Irby doesn't want to give too many power points. Rallying Call has been used. Cave Pads was chosen. Okay, I take it back. So he was starting with Cave Pads to debuff the enemy units to make them weaker. Which I believe does make sense in a situation like this. Because war chanting the Goblin Warriors is not gonna change too much. Since you're gonna lose them. While the Cave Pads are gonna outlive the Goblin Warriors, if this makes sense. The farm has been taken down. This one, he was, this one he was not demolishing, that's why the spider links are now level 2. That's gonna unlock once again the self-regeneration. It's hard now for these uh, soldiers to achieve something, because in order to take down this tunnel, they have to tank these goblin arches and also tank the fortress eventually, right? And only one of them, with the nerf of the, with the debuff of the keyfpads, I believe that's not gonna be enough. The farm here is gonna be taken down next. 
no protection. Archer range now, which is nice to have some defense against the Spiderlings, as they are weak against Archers. They are level 2 now, but they are running it down, actually, into the Fortress. I don't know about that. Attacking the Fortress with the Soldiers doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I like that, that he's actually killing Goblins. That's, that's the right call. Like, if you are trying desperately to actually attack this tunnel, you might lose any, everything without being able to take down anything. So killing units in a situation like this, I like that. Oh, 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 but the Baraks, the Spiderlings, though, they are dealing a lot of damage. Nice clamping from Fairy. And the Baraks has been taken down just like that. Level 2 now, level 3 now, actually. Hold ground stands. They have no chance. The soldiers, of course, they have no chance against the Spiderlings. And Irby is going to be forced to build another Baraks. While Fairy was actually... While Irby has actually was able to destroy this tunnel. Are you kidding me? How? He did it. It killed all the tunnels around the fortress. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. But Fairy was expanding at the top side. He has three tunnels now. Um, Irby has now only, what, one pikeman from the barracks. That's it. He has to rebuild the barracks to make some more pikemen slash soldiers. Spiderlings, they need to be careful against the, against the archers, of course. But again, it's a two versus three versus one situation. They can always kill those archers in no time. Warchan is going to be used now. How many power points does Irby have? Irby has also almost enough power points for rebuild. Nice one here, disengaging with the right call. Now you can re-engage. And no creeps so far also for Irby. So he's losing a lot without getting anything from the map. Money-wise at least. But he was able to deal also a lot of damage to Fairy's economy. So I believe it's not hot. That's, that's bad. Don't get in a, in a melee range like this. But he was stalling a lot of time. That's gonna be overcommitment. He might lose a lot of spiderlings to take down this farm. But he's gonna save the battalion at least. That's the that's the most important thing. And since they are level 3, they're gonna respawn over time. As fairy is creeping the goblin layer. Oh, I mean, not goblin layer, sorry. I keep saying goblin layer. The work layer at the top left side. There are some pikemen actually they are recovering over time from Irby hiding at the corner. Okay. Beef pads are gonna be available at the same time as the rallying call. And also the man of the West player now has the chance to go for either rebuild or the heal from the spellbook. Do you also do two v tournaments? Uh, we did one or two so far. But yeah, maybe. Maybe. It's a bad fight to take for spider links. Oh, he might, he might lose this one. Oh, not, oh my goodness. Not even close, baby. Come on. Not even close. Losing this level 3 would hurt him, but... He has such a massive lead right now, 450 command points for Irby, 500 for Spiderlings, I mean not Spi- Dude, this faction doesn't- it's not called Spiderlings, but he has many Spiderlings on the field, that's why I call them Spiderling faction now. Uh, <laughs> so if it's level 1, he's rebuilding this tunnel over time, because of the rubble. And now he has two tunnels next to each other, which doesn't give him money, but it's give him, you know, at least command points, which is not a bad thing, I guess. And Irby is in a turtle situation now, because that's that's a risky move, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, building a barracks there means you have zero defense, you know, for the early game. Which is kind of making it hard for you to survive. Against a faction like Goblins, which likes to snowball. Oh, that was close, but not close enough. The farm has been protected. Irby is expanding, but struggling to keep those farms alive. The farm is gonna be cancelled, this... You know, running away from the goblins is not possible as well, because they are going to outrun you all the time. So what is the plan now from Irby? I, know, I can't tell you. He was using even Rebuild at some place. I don't know where he was using, maybe here on this level 2 farm, not sure. You will need some rangers, definitely, to kill those spiderlings faster. Doing nothing with this units because they are using the old ground stance, that means they're not going to target automatically. So he's taking damage for free. He's busy with some other places. He's not paying attention. He's finally paying attention now, but it's too late. The thing is, if you are using the old ground stance, your units are never going to be able to attack alone. Like, you need to manually click them, you know, with the old ground stance to make sure that they are attacking. <laughs> Isn't Aragorn the play? Aragorn? What? Hey, man, YouTube started suggesting... Me, your videos, great to find you streaming. Hey man, see Drake, appreciate that. Appreciate the follow from earlier today. And welcome to this stream. Also, thanks for watching the YouTube videos. Appreciate it. Tunnel is going down at the top left side. 
And actually this game isn't over just yet. Irby is still in the game. Because he keeps building stuff all the time. He's not giving up. He's going now for the stable. Instead of going for the... Oh, he was actually going for the level 2 already. For the Rangers. Okay. And the thing is, I believe Fairy doesn't make too many Spiderlings anymore, right? Because he was also going for the transition now into the Haftarol Swordsman from the Fissure. Uh, which makes sense. Haftarol Swordsman are the way to go in the mid to late game. However, they are more expensive now. They cost 450. The thing is, uh, Gondonites, they need to deal with these Goblin Warriors. And the Rangers, they have to deal with the Haftarol Swordsman. But for that, we need to make multiple Rangers first. We're gonna, after this one, we're gonna have uh, Mr. Smoke against Ave Have. Best of seven, the challenge. The farm has been protected, almost down. But, and the rebuild is still on cooldown, by the way. So he has to be careful to keep this level two farm protected. Nice ambush here, I like that. Look, look the situation. It's hard for the Haftarol Swordman to achieve something. They are taking way too much damage. It's two versus one situation, and they're gonna be taken down. And that's 450 resources gone. Just like that. No, it's not It's not looking bad for Slovenia. No, no, Smokey. I believe he's, he's still in the game. He's still in the game. Irby is still in the game. He's not giving up. He's now Rangers on the field. Uh, Akchai Ahmed, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Hoş geldin, sefalar getirdin. Gondo Knights are gonna be taking care of this. I mean, they cannot fight against the Haftarol Swordsman in a one-on-one, -on -one, but it's not a one-on-one -on -one situation, of course. Uh, some more pikemen going for the grand harvest, which means 15% more resources from these farms. He has to make... Oh, but spider allies summon from Irby now being used. Okay. This might be dangerous for Irby. Split them into pieces. Like, make split them like this and use them more, more offensively, maybe? Okay, I mean, he was able to destroy this farm too, right? Yeah, that's, that's bad for Irby. That's bad for Irby because he's now down, what, to 500 command points and Barry has 825 without any Barrow expansions. So Fairy is definitely ahead. The spiders are still doing a nice job. They are still remaining on the field too. Looks like they want to kill some units. The Gondor Knights, oh, the Gondor Knights, be careful, don't lose them. I mean, they are only level 1 anyway. And Spider Riders, no Pikemen. Oh no. Oh no. No, that doesn't look for Slo good for Slovenia anymore, Smokey, after this one. He lost them all. Like, no, no Pikemen in position to keep those arches protected. You have my soul. This is gonna hurt. General uh, Kenobi 1. Obi Wan Kenobi. These are not the Druids you are looking for. Welcome. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Okay, the targets now. The farm at the top left. And yeah, you can see the command point differences, right? Between Fairy and Irby. 900 to 550. Tom Bombadil summon is going to be his choice. No no deal tower. I mean, no loan. Uh, not the tower summon from the spellbook. Which can be also nice in a situation like this. However, the tower, I believe... He's not going to be able to survive long enough against the Afterall Swordsman. Tom Bombadil might give you the chance to do a great defense. However, if Fairy is paying a oh, nice one, not bad. But that's what I mean. Like, the Goblin units are so mobile, they can always disengage from Tom Bombadil, you know? Maybe it's going to be a nice choice against Dwarves. Units they are, which are slow, you can always catch. And you can get the best of Tom Bombadil, right? But if you are not even able to catch them and he can always just, just run away, like, look at this timing. It's going down without him being too much of a threat against goblins. Okay. Great situation, definitely. Or fairy and goblins, I believe, are one of the best snowballing factions. So they're gonna just keep snowballing all the time. And Irby doesn't even see the other side of the map pretty much now for a long time. Yes, this one under this control, which is not giving him too much vision. He's only able to see this one tunnel, that's it. 
getting some more Gonda Knights on the field. But the problem is, um, they have now multiple counters on the field against the Gonda Knights. Spider Riders are gonna be a nice choice against the Gonda Knights. Spider Lynx, of course. Half Troll Swordsman. And this is a Wildman of Dunland summon, which is a nice one. I like this. Because look what he's doing. Do you see that? He's slowing down this Gonda Knight so they cannot charge in. And he lost. Okay, that's a nice long shot from the Rangers, though. He killed a lot of the Wildman of Dunland and almost every single melee unit. He's got only the Wildman Extroverts are left, pretty much. And maybe that was a waste from Fairy, not gonna lie. Like, he wasted 10 power points and also his War Chant for this play. But during all this time, do you see this? Do you see he's targeting multiple farms at the very same time? Builder from Irby is he's paying attention, okay? Gonna get in safety for now. Those farms are gonna all get targeted, either gonna be taken down or gonna be damaged big time. That means Fairy can finish them off later on. And Irby, even though his command points are not looking that bad, but you need to consider that he is investing every single cent into rebuilding stuff, which, which is something Fairy doesn't have to do. That's why Fairy has literally now 3,000 resources collected. He's getting... Uh, he could save for the Drogov, you know? But I believe, you know, would, would not be maybe the best choice because of the Rangers, but again, would be cool for the style points, I would like it. There is a tower coming up from Fairy, there's a tunnel. More units are moving from this pathway. And what a series, dude, what a series. Like, that's kinda crazy. Fairy was leading 2-0, then Irby was winning three games in a row, getting a lead. And now Fairy coming back once again in the series in the best of seven. That's what I was expecting in this uh, games between these two players. And Fairy was playing really, really nice. Even in the games he was losing, he was playing quite good. And Irby too. Almost 11 power points. Now he can go for the Watcher if he wants to. He can go for the Darkness if he wants to. Uh, Lan Commando. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. I don't uh, like early market without level up farms though. Yeah, that makes actually a lot of sense because level, far level 1 farms are very, very hard to keep alive. And then you have uh, not enough money, not enough command points because of the level 1 farms. And you are investing so much time and money for the marketplace. Maybe not the best choice. Yeah. There is a tower. Just to be annoying, you know, multiple farms from Men of the West next to each other. Just to be able to keep the command points high. These are not giving you too much money like this. Um, but he's down to 450 command points only. He has nearly 15 power points collected now. But what's the matter if you have to use it eventually defensively? And you are not, you know, the thing is, you are getting outspammed big time now. Goblins, they have so much money and also command, uh, so much money and also. Uh, you know, command points. It means you can always spam units, really expensive units, and at some point, oh, the Watcher is coming in clutch. There we go. That's gonna kill a lot from Fairy. He's also killing his own stuff. He doesn't care about friends and foe, by the way. Spider lights being used at the very same time. The commitment now against the right side. And Cloudbreak is the choice from the Man of the West player RB to stun the enemy units from the spellbook. Cloudbreak Tom Bombardier can be also a great combo combo potential, you know, because with the Cloudbreak you can stun them, then you can go for a beautiful and juicy, you know, Sonic Song, which can be like a like a situation with Visa Plus, for example. The Sonic Song is very similar, right, to the Visa Plus of Saruman and Gandalf. But Azok is not stunned, of course, he's level 3 now. Level 4 is gonna unlock his great battle rage, which means 100% more damage for the Orc hero, I mean Goblin hero. The, far the farm is down. Rallying Collar has been used on the Rangers. That's the only... No, he has one more here for defense. Man is just defending himself as long as he possibly can. But he's surrounded now. From all the potential sides. And he is not able to expand offensively, not even a little bit. Irby is paying attention. He's going to be able to get away with the builder by building a wall up. And Irby is fighting until the very end. But he's going to be either command points kept soon or he's going to run out of, uh, run out of money. While, Irby, uh, while Fairy has not a problem like this. He has full command points, he can keep making units. In the second, he has upgraded Half Troll Swordsman with heavy armor and forged plates. It's. Oh! Azok! 
Azok? Great. Oh, he's he's killing so much here. <laughs> Tom Bomba deals some in. Azok, do, do you see that Azok is popping up? The thing is, he's so small, the targeting him is so hard, you know? Especially when he's around, like, a lot of units. But he's gonna eventually go down here. He's down. We have now a shield up. Oh, a hero I like to see more. Her special passive is she can walk over the mountains too. And over the sea. So pretty, pretty impressive hero. I feel like she's very squishy though. I mean, even though she has like 5000 HP, but she, she dies very quickly. Every time I see her, she's getting bursted down in a second. But we shall see now. She's good against Kev because she has also splash damage. You don't know. And the web is also not bad against archers and units. To slow them down. Against Kev, she's pretty good. Look, do you see how many units she's killing? <laughs> bam, bam, level 2 already. Nice, she's she's on the hunt. But look, 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 look. You, uh, don't, don't fight against the pikemen. Even the spearmen are hurting her. They're, they're the, probably one of the worst the pikemen in the game. You have my soul. And she's forced to disengage now. That's a white man of Dunlin summon. Uh, Tompa Natas, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it and welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. And we have 9 power points only collected for Irby. He's down power point wise, he's down command point wise, he's losing farms every single time and he has only one level 2 farm, that's it. That's the one farm he has level 2. And look at the tunnels now from the goblin player, you see? They're eventually gonna hit level 3, all of them at the same time. They're all level 2 around the fortress. And he has so much money at this point of the game. He has so much money, he can do whatever he wants. But I need to I need to be honest, Irby is defending himself quite nicely all the time, right? Irby is, you know, doing a nice job. Doing a nice job defending. But it's a, it's a suffer game. He's also suffering. Imagine you are in a spot like Irby. And you all you can do is be around your own fortress and defend. That's all you can do. Because the second you leave your side, look at this layout of this map. Do you see that guys? Tunnel, 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 tunnel. Tower. Tunnel in, the be in behind. Tunnels everywhere. There's even a level 3 tunnel. Tunnels. Do you see this tunnel system? Like, do you see how many tunnels there he has on the fields next to Irby? This is crazy. Where is Gollum? Gollum is, was lurking around somewhere here, but I can't not find him. Maybe Fairy can even recruit <laughs> Sauron. You know, he can afford it, of course. Chill up. He's diving in against the rangers this time. Again, splash damage is coming in clutch. But tower guards are gonna hurt her. Hurt, 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 hurt. She's gonna run away. She's quite mobile, but is she mobile enough? On the knights? Oh my goodness. Oh no, that's a big spider. No, Shilob. Shilob is gone. Worm summon. Oh, the worm. The splash damage. I mean, the area damage from the worm. Just like similar to the to the summon dragon from goblins, you know? She's able to hit multiple units at the same time or multiple buildings. If they are, if they are behind each other, for example, if you... If a you know farm here or here behind the farm, she's able to hit them both at the same time. So she's pretty good when it comes to destroy the buildings. That might, that might be it, right? I mean, he has only two farms left. These are the two farms. He's gonna have only now zero farms. He's gonna use <laughs> rebuild. That's the only farm Irby has left on the field, guys. Imagine having a marketplace with the grand harvest, but you have nothing to buff. As he's down to 200 command points, no money. And it's no, res no resource income either, besides from the fortress. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. If Irby can... I mean, maybe he's hoping that Fairy is gonna disconnect, because that's the only possible way Irby can potentially go for a rematch. <laughs> Other than that, it's not gonna be possible. Azok is level 6. At this point of the game, it's even gonna not gonna be a rematch, because this is just over at this point, right? He has 15 power points collected, trying to go for the 25, but has not the chance to make any units... Or to make any buildings either because he has no money. Like he has to wait eventually to get enough money from the fortress to be able to build a single farm. That's all he can do. No heroes. Eomir could be a nice choice with the outlaw leadership which means you could get money for killing stuff. On the other side look at the money from... He's going for a big thing. He's going for that fight rig. You already know the dragon nest upgrades here. Or we're seeing waiting for DC. <laughs> you already know what's happening you know. It's a dragon nest upgrade on the fortress. 
do you know what's gonna what's gonna happen? You we, we already are waiting it. It's gonna be the big boy. The big boy guys. The outbreak is gonna be used to stun them. I mean the ranges are actually hitting very hard. I like that. Against half Swordman Swordman and also against the Spider Riders. And Cloudbreak stuns is also very, very strong. I like that. I wish the Cloudbreak in BFME 1 would be that strong as well. In, in BFME 1, the Cloudbreak is kind of absolutely useless. Uh, Senju Adamo. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. And welcome to the stream. Look at the map. <laughs> Look at the map for a second. That is one signal. That's the only yellow point on the minimap I can see, which is not the Fortress and around the Fortress. Great Battle Rage. And Fairy is saying, no, 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 Irby. You are not getting any money this time. Where is, where is, <laughs> where is Gollum when we need him? The troll layer is still remaining on the field, by the way. Uh, Spider Ally is summoned to kill some units. He's gonna use the long shot to kill them. It's a Tom Bombadil summon defensively. Azok is popping off, and Tom Bombadil is also a great counter hero because he's able to knock down the enemy heroes all the time. Watch now. You see? You see William. Doesn't deal too much damage to them, but actually puts them on the ground all the time and the units around him are gonna be able to finish him off. Just like that. The pressure. He's building tunnels now. Kinda commit also against the production building. Sonic Song is gonna be available now. He can use it if he wants to. He'll be using it. Always use aggressive stance. Maximize your damage output. That's a long shot. Fairy was paying attention and he's gonna be able to dodge the incoming damage. Multiple long shots, long shots are incoming from the rangers, that's all er, we can do. The Watcher is available, almost 20 power points collected, look the money, look at the minimap. This is... Oh, this is... How we wanna play goblins <laughs> against men, I guess. I joined your Discord server and I'm enjoying your content, happy that find you. Hey man, I'm also happy that you are here. Welcome. And again, th thanks for the follow. Appreciate that so much. All right, Weltman of Dunland summon. This might be it. He's now committing against the fortress. Does have the dragon nest, but he's not going for the dragon. I don't know what he's going for. I'm not sure. Maybe it takes so much time to get him on the field. Three thousand resources collected. The watcher was used. The ranges are getting slapped <laughs> from this watcher. Look at this watcher. Oh, he's eating. He's hungry. He can't eat anything. Look at this face. <laughs> Do you see that? Uh, I love this zoom out. Because you can also zoom in really far. Oh, that's an army of the dead summon. I see you. Army of the dead summon. Killing everything from goblins. And he has now the Balrog summon as well. Talos, good evening. Okay, GG's. Well played. And Fairy defeats Irby. We see Balrog at the top side. Do you see that? He's getting summoned. And that's gonna be the victory for Fairy in the best of seven series. That means he's gonna now move up to the top top three spot, and Irby is gonna drop down to the top five spots.